It is the 22nd of Beltane of Samrod. Uh, or your adventure will be on the 22nd. It's the night before. The 21st. That is uh, the evening of sunny day. The skies have been clear. It's been fairly temperate, though it gets very cold at night. This is a cold part of the world, so it just gets it gets cold here, to be clear. Um, there have been some light winds. And uh, as we go to the lodge, I want to remind you that you can always ask around for rumors as well, even though it's not the start of the adventure. So there's several things you can do. Actually, before we go to the lodge, just as a reminder of uh, all the stuff that's going on, um, Zilkor's Ferry has become a busy place, properly a village now, of several hundred inhabitants. Something that has been going on lately in the village that you would know about is that the mercenaries that were kept here, um, there have been sort of three forces of law here in Zelkor's Ferry, and they have kept everything pretty well in lockstep. And this is not a place where a single crime could happen, and crime has been punished very severely. Uh, and that's primarily because of Brother Caden and Father Bloombad, who bring the the fury of the light down on anything that that looks the wrong, you know sideways in this place. Which, given the problems you've had, somewhat understandable. And the people here. Uh, have come to sort of in the past year that has become almost the culture of this place. Uh, it's a place where uh, everybody is very religious. When your village gets attacked by monsters and then saved by a bunch of you know heroes and stuff, and they they put a church to their god in there, then you know it it tends to to shake out that way, I guess. So that's kind of the culture of the place. Uh, and that's been a major force of, when I say law, not just the metaphysical force, but like literally people don't commit crimes here. Um, but the other thing that has made it that way has been Odo Bristleback, who maintains a barracks and a force of mercenaries that act as his personal guards and uh, the town guards. Uh, they have been here for a while, although most of them died last year in the Battle of Zelkor's Ferry with a group of bandits, a, a bandit army that attacked the gates and nearly killed everyone in the village. Uh, Zelkor's Ferry was narrowly saved. Um, you all were gone at the time, but suffering under these same bandits. Uh, so that was a major problem last year. You notice that you haven't run in, ran into many people out in the woods this year. Um... If you recall, that was a major thing going on last year. <laughs> like every every two miles, you would run into a group of people that were either fleeing or chasing people. And anyways, the other thing that was a big force of law here was um, in uh, over the past year, there was a large force of mercenaries that had been gathered by Kellogg. Now, Kellogg had organized the mercenaries and sent a contingent here. Uh, the hound, the law, the hounds of the pine. Uh, and what are we going to call this group? Are they, especially since, um, especially since Gerald, is it, are, are they not a mercenary company? Uh, I don't know what, what they would be called. Um, the order. How about them? I feel like the the modern version would be uh, a militia or a private military company. Uh, yeah, they would be a PMC order in military. Is, yeah. But a knightly order is probably a more apt description of the culture which Gerald is attempting to foster in it. Yeah, it's interesting because they don't have either the authority of the church and they're not a royal. They have no royal authority to be a, a you know, none of them are actually knights. Um but, you know, this group of hedge knights, um, mercenaries, what are they? Who knows? But they're the heroes of this place. And anyways, Kellogg sent a contingent up here with several sergeants and um, 
the force in total was something like eight or so, and then he kept a large force down south, and then Kellogg left, and Kellogg has been down south, and you haven't heard from him, and you haven't heard from any of the other mercenaries. Um, every single one of those mercenaries died in the recent, in the past year, except for one or two. Um, and the, the surviving one that made it up here was like, I'm, I'm out. I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to stay, <laughs> you know, and now you only have three left and those were recent hires. Uh, I will say, by the way, that they are, pi they are, um, uh, how, how, halberdiers, how they have halberds. So anyways, uh, Happy so measures. you have lost a portion of the law enforcement of this place and the ability to guard the town and to defend it against uh, outside forces. So that's something that has kind of been taught, been the talk of the town is how like the mercenaries have actually a, a large number of them have left the city. And now for a town of several hundred people, you only have about 22, you know, 26 some people that could defend it. Um, and uh, otherwise, there are a bunch of businesses that have grown up around town. All right. Yeah, like, the robbery is the future. I think I've got that all transcribed in a useful format. Uh, at the lodge tonight, um, let me get this zoomed in. Um, it's actually fairly quiet. And only two people have come by the lodge. Both travelers looking for work. One is a mercenary. You do not have to... Uh, you can talk to them if you want. Um, but they want, they want work. And uh, with a mercenary, you can you can uh, assume that they are professional and reliable. Like you know, you don't have to try to check their alignment and vet them and everything like that. So uh, yep. this this one professional mercenary arrives and he wants to be hired. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, he also has a uh, a pole arm. Uh, but his name is, uh, is, uh, Brennan. All right. And the other? The other person, um, and this person approaches you directly. If you, if you come here to, to drink and discuss your plans and everything, um, the, uh, the doors of, of the black night outside, they, they open in the wind and a person comes in. He's, um, so let me take a look here. Can I cast Detect Evil? Sure. Let's, let's, let's. Yeah. Witch, burn him! <laughs> um. This is Magnus's first time in this place, actually. Ah. Oh, oh, hello, Magnus. Uh, I'm the crew. I described I mean, it in the roleplay chat. I think that probably what we're going to start shifting towards is the founders that paid into it will get the benefits of it as a state. Future people can pay into it and get the same benefit, but they have to pay in the same amount. And then it'll, you'll get like add ons and you can build onto it. But, you know, since we're going to go to one day, this, like, we're all the hounds. You're either a hound okay. or you're working for the hounds. So this That's is kind of, yeah, exactly. Um, uh, just to simplify matters that way, there's not like, I don't know. I think, I think it'd be too complicated to do it otherwise right now. Anyways, yeah. um, the, the person that comes in, uh, let's see, they, uh, I'm getting a, like a, like an idea of what they might look like. It's a young man, uh, very handsome. He has blonde hair, short cropped hair, uh, but short, it's cropped, but like, you know, down to here on the sides and parted. Uh, but he's, he's, uh, uh, handsome, but uh, short and slight uh, figure, wearing leather armor and um, 
uh, daggers at each side, and he, he comes in. And he says, "Is this where the hounds of the pine are?" Yes. Excellent. And he comes in and kicks his boots up like he owns the place. And he's like, "I'm Egon, and I am come to uh, to travel the underworld and to get treasure and glory." Well, you have come to the, precisely the correct place. Great. Is there something to drink? And then he looks over at who is the, you know, one of the arch priests of this entire place, like Caden, and is like, C- could you get me something to drink? He may not. I will do so, however. <laughs> ah, excellent. Quickly about it, then. And like the good host I am, I fetch him a drink. <laughs> when you were talking about law and order, it, it dinged something, and I meant to do it, and it's going to go away. Um, we did have... And inside, I don't remember if there was ever, I don't think there was ever a conclusion on it. The, uh, the one or two murders for the guy who ran away with the, uh, the, I don't oh, remember. Yeah, that guy, the idol. Idol, uh, the, that's it. So the, yeah, he murdered and got away. Nobody ever caught up with him or anything like that. Nope, we never caught the guy who took yeah, the hat. Just want to make sure. That guy vanished. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's one of the, one of the incidents that kind of has led to, um, Brother Caden and Father Bloombad like keeping a yeah. strict eye yeah. on this place at all times. Yeah, because he just murdered somebody and ran off. Yep. So this guy at, uh, at the stables for sure, and I thought there might have been a second one, but I know the stables person got killed. Yeah, I, I like to imagine, uh, John, that this this magic is not. It, I like to imagine it as something that you probably wouldn't say, you know, I cast a spell or something. It probably just oh. is like an... No, no, I mean, you know, mechanically it's true, right? But I like to right, imagine yeah. it's very vague and pervasive. Like, it's probably just a reliable intuition to you, you know, um, which you and Father Bloombad still probably see as the light's blessing them either way. But, you know... Uh, you can you can sense people like if they're if they're rotten, you know, and um, right. the thing that's really peculiar though that is maybe hints at the supernatural is you can you can you can sense if someone is infected with the the taint of chaos, like if they if there's something truly malign and otherworldly about them, right? Um, and anyways, uh, so that's how I'll distinguish your result this person uh is they're just an arrogant and uh a a, someone who has had things given to them for a long time and wants to make their mark in the world they're they're not a you know okay that's good yeah So he, he's like, where, so where's that drink? <laughs> I provide it to him. Ah, excellent. Like, he just takes it. This, this is it. probably a side of uh, of Gerald, which is comes out fairly often in that, like he has comes from a long, he has a long career as basically a goon for a nobleman or for a low ranking knight since he spent like 20 years as a man at arms. Yeah. He, he throws you uh, a couple of gold pieces, which, even though it's not a lot of money for you all now, is a lot no, of that's money. A lot of, that's, that's a lot, a lot of, money of money for anybody. Yeah. yeah. I will, he, if you're going to pay me like that, I will continue to kiss your ass. Thank you. Yeah. He, that's, that's, that's good money. He's like, excellent. He drinks it. And he's like, uh, mm. you can tell that he, he just kind of looks down on the drink. And then he's we like, have so, some slightly better wine in the rear, if you would prefer. <laughs> so so when, when do we leave? In the morning. Now, however, I should I should ask you to, at first, you understand that the expeditions under which we undertake are a matter of mortal peril, and it is important that we uh, share an understanding of each other's capabilities and have mutual trust. So if you could tell me anything about who the hell you are, I would kind of appreciate that. Who are you? Oh, yes. <clears throat> I'm, I am Egon. Mm-hmm. Um... I come from, um, and I come from, from Lunden, um, and, um, I, uh, well, 
watch this. And he takes a knife out and he does some tricks on it. He balances it, throws it against a wall, and hits a target he wants, you know. It's, it's As if that speaks for itself. Yeah. It seems suitable. Now, an important... The psychological aspect of being trapped beneath the earth, or even the sensation of being trapped beneath the earth, in the presence of supernatural horrors, is significant. Do you have experience delving into the lands below? His eyes light up when you say supernatural horrors, and he puts his hands on the table and leans forward, and he says, I've heard there are monsters down there. It's true. We've seen several. Amazing. Now, it is amazing, but it's also terrifying. Excuse me, let me get my spider head. I'll show you what we're talking about. <laughs> Excellent. Like, let me whip this out. You guys can bother him for a second while I go get the head. Yeah. Yeah, my last retainer died and, and got brought back by the magic statue. He looks at all and at all. He's like, "That's incredible." Or do we leave tonight? No, still in, morning, still in the morning. Still in the morning. But she left the town screaming. Ah, that's she was she was very high high pit strong. Lesser stuff. And he takes it <laughs> and just keeps drinking. Waiting for the spider head that he's excited about seeing. Yeah. Oh, oh a, there's a creepy hat thing. There's a he's prop got. here. Yeah, prop. There's a prop. He's like amazing. This is yes, incredible. It, it's still furry, fuzzy, you know, the spider head in places. It's disgusting. Although I'm afraid it's it's probably started to, uh, the, the, fur, the fur has probably started to flake off in most of it. Anyway, so this is the sort of thing which you may encounter in the lands below. And as marvelous as it is when it's, you know, tamed and dead, different when it's coming at you. Ah, I can't <laughs> wait to get myself one of those. I think he'll do. I confess I find his enthusiasm charming. Do you hang yeah. them on the walls here? Out uh, of character, you ought to. That's pretty cool. I like, probably yeah. should. We, we need to get a taxidermist. We should start doing that. <laughs> we need to get a taxidermist in this town. Maybe that's we too do. high fantasy. I do that in ESO. I, you know, okay, I kill the monsters and put them on the wall. No, we lodge. should. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. What kind of a lodge Yeah, what kind of a lodge is it without some beast heads on the what wall? What are the good heads we've found? The troll is too much like a person. The wolves were also turned out Most to be too of much them like are people. persons or like persons. That's kind of been the whole problem, I think. Yeah, but yeah. that that's t but the spy the spider head though. Yeah. That you can keep. Yeah. yeah. Like people heads. We need to kill some demons or something. You should have got the giant rat mother's head. You remember oh, the gigantic rat? Mm. It's like the size of an, you know, a cow's head, but it's a rat. Oh, I, I hold on to a handful of the, of the goop if you want to just slap it onto the wall and watch it slide down and makes it. No, never mind. Oh, the gelatinous cube. <laughs> oh, you guys got the cube? Yeah, Congratulations. No, we, 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 yeah, um, we killed it finally. Like, oh, the horrible cube. It sucked me into it. <laughs> oh yeah, he was he was in trouble. Yeah, I got the knowledge. I'm, Egon, Egon is just thrilled with these stories of like the horrible right. things you've seen down there. All right, well, good. Uh, I'll. It tastes awful. I'll spend some time giving him briefings on the various weird crap we've seen, so none of it blows his mind too completely in the moment. I have. I still give him even odds for like turning his pants brown and turning tail and running when things get weird. But maybe he'll shock me. Sometimes they do. Meanwhile, this is also. Um. What's his full name? Let's go. Uh, Gerald. For Faria. Faria? Faria. F A R I A. This is Gerald Faria's last adventure. Mm hmm. Um, until he when finally retire. retires. Uh, so, what, I mean, what do you all. What, what do you all say when he tells you that, I guess? You know, I, what does that look like? What, why? I feel like. I feel like I'm, I'm reaching, I came here originally intent, believing that my divine calling was to die here in service of the light and on the front line. But I've found that I've grown attached to this life again and to Zelkor's ferry. And I, this place needs strong arms to defend it. These walls are sturdy, but they can be climbed and the creatures around here would love to. 
Yeah. I feel like my purpose here would be well served as an, an instructor, as an instructor, a teacher to those who would be who would follow in my footsteps. And I confess, I've, after that brush with death I had back in uh, Bard's Gate before the tragic yet unnamed catastrophe that wiped it from the world, well, that put fear in me, and I want to stay in this world longer still. I just don't want to risk my life any longer if I need not. That was a very close call. You were you were just one one uh, re resurrected one unconscious, rogue away from yeah. the end. I felt very close to death. Well, the tower could use a, a good hand to uh, defend it. Yes. It does have a. Oh, we've light. seen that we have a shortage of. Like, yeah, we don't. We're missing, uh, yeah. especially the uh, upper upper guards and stuff. Mm -hmm. Keeping this place safe is clearly a high priority for all of us. It is. I fully approve with your decision. Thank you. Now, with that in mind, let's do the most ridiculously dangerous thing we can so that I can die ironically well, at the last Well, uh, obviously, point. obviously, you know, yeah. you're getting too old for this, bleep. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Out of character, uh, that's canon now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make um, another business uh, in addition to you being a guard captain. We'll determine the mechanics, but basically you'll be able to produce a certain number of guard sergeants or longbowmen. Like you could actually train, oh, cool. you know, so oh, if nice. you get, if you get like vanilla ones, you might be able to train them and I'll, I'll get like some mechanics for like maybe even slowly able to train, um, villagers or something, but I, I don't know. I need to balance it. And, and this is a yeah. slow burn game. That's not something that There's should a lot happen. Of, uh, human resources and it's absolute nightmare to design and balance. I yeah. go with your gut. I trust you. An another, I mean, basic another training is eight weeks. You know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, not, not nowadays. Yeah, basic there's, a training. Of, there's a lot of games that have really cool mechanics. Usually like the, the resource type games, they have cool mechanics. Like you build a, a barracks of certain level or whatever, and then they get your next soldiers, like total roar and stuff. Uh, yeah. Your next soldiers come out with, you know, improved armor or mm -hmm. improved morale or whatever it is, because you now have this, well, this, we uh, we have all that. So you have different things here, right? You have uh, you have guard sergeants or mercenary sergeants. Uh, uh, how what? Halberdiers? Halberdiers is that the word? Uh, that's how I call it. I have no idea. Uh, YouTube. How is this pronounced? Longbowmen, uh, and then and then you have house guards versus adventuring uh, mercenaries. So there is like this really this diversity to keep up with uh, going on there. And so I'll have, you know, uh, Gerald's, Gerald will basically run that, uh, which is to say, I will with your input. So it can just happen in the background. Uh, but then I'll add some interesting mechanics, like how many sergeants can you produce? So if sergeants die and all this kind of stuff, I'll work all that out. Um, uh, another one would be maybe some training mechanic where you can, for enough money, and enough time you gain some benefit, like an attribute increase, but it would be a small one or something. That would be amazing. Yeah, it, none of this would be powerful, right? Like this is a very slow, you know, uh, low fantasy game. It's not about, you know, but nonetheless, uh, I'd like it because of the flavor, not because of the, you know, anyways. Uh, okay, so. I want to hire that mercenary as well. Agreed. Yeah, your yeah. name was something something. It was with the beat. Brennan. So, uh, how many mercenaries do you all want to? Uh, so I have to set tokens. How many mercenaries do you all want to take with you into the wild? Probably. These are one hit dice guys. Yes. Probably two. Yeah, two sounds sensible. To guard the horses. Okay. Now let's um, keep them alive until we can get there with the horses. Yeah, let's try that. So you want to travel on foot and then have them watch the horses? No, I think we have two extra horses. Well, again, you know, I didn't get the horses for constantly using the horses because that's constantly putting them at risk. The reason I got the horses is so I would have a horse when I lose my horse, not so I bring them all my horses in one uh, basket every time. You keep okay. volunteering them. Okay, well, right. not my horse is available. Yeah, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm just have, I want to have one horse behind. Okay. Because I can't, remember how long we went without horses? The other group had horses. We didn't have horses. We can, well, we can, we'll do the wagon thing. The weather is conducive to walking from uh, yeah, our location walking. to 
Mouth of what? Doom, right? Okay. And the, the ambient danger level is a bit it's reduced really from cold. Run Up right. to Winter. Let's go on foot. Yeah. We need to okay. we need to flay flay. Now, we're gonna have a stable and horses going in the future, and then we, then we, this is not as big of an issue, but right now we have to go to a city to get horses. Yeah, we're ho it's, we're horse poor. It's not as uh it's not as cold as the winter though. Okay. I assume that both right. of the uh, adventurers who are signing on as mercenaries want a half share, plus maybe some flat fee on top of that. Well, uh, and I, I um, so uh, the difference in terms, and I'm, I may be uh, mercenaries are their own category, and they're a specialist. So you give them a flat, you, you get a flat fee. It's either um, uh, thirty gold. It's essentially a tenth the price to keep them on, retain them for a month. To, so it's like 30 gold a month. Or if they adventure, every time they go on an adventure, I deduct it from the pay. And it's about 27 gold. Uh, for right. a and then year. we also tip them oftentimes to keep the morale up. But that's not a share, that's a tip. Yeah, now that's something with, with the mercenaries, that could be something more after the fact. Like you could think yeah. of that as more like building your estate. The hirelings, on the other hand, they're different. The hirelings are much more prone to having personalities and their own goals, and they may betray you even. They may, you know, join a different group or all kinds of stuff, right? And so they're prone to morale. So giving them a decent share affects them, and eventually, and they, I think you have, you all have like a hundred percent casualty rate so far uh, on hirelings. Except for Magnus and Krogon. Krogon has kept Malar and Rodicon alive for like four months now. But I think the rest of them have died, right? So, uh, you know. So it, is it as cold as the winter at night? Um, it, it, is, it is. No, it's not freezing, but it's cold. But Okay. Um, so we'll be okay. Yeah. Um, well. In, um, well, let's see. What was I going to say? Uh, so the only one who wants to go into the oh, hole with us is Egon. So you all already have a reputation. Um, and that's why there aren't a lot of people in here. Like, you're, you're seen as these, like, indomitable heroes that do impossible things, basically. Um, a lot of red shirts. But no one wants to go and hang out with you doing these impossible things. Like, right? Yeah, red shirts, that's, exactly. That's pretty reasonable. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Uh, Brennan is free to, you know, get work here within the walls of Zelkor's Ferry. Maybe we should have let some of our uh, some of our mercenaries have a chance at surviving. Oh, he wants to go. You know, oh, he does. Yeah, he's he's all right. He's crazy and arrogant and thinks he's awesome and stuff. I know so. Egon does, but Brennan. Oh, the Howard, I'm sorry. Whose name you had to improvise at the last second. Yeah, no, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, Brennan, uh, yeah, he's a, he's just a, a, a mercenary looking for work. He's essentially a soldier. So, yeah, all right, well, uh, we're not going to drag him into the death hole. You go ahead and uh, man the walls, and we'll we'll work out the details later. Thank, okay. Welcome to the ranks, buddy. So you got two staying back and two going with you. Um, they're, they don't have ranged weapons, I'm going to say, and they're not sergeants. Um, they will not, mercenaries are unlikely to flee. Um, mm hmm Okay. I mean, if they have to choose between, you know, their survival and not, they're welcome to flee. I, I, I appreciate them, uh, t like, being willing to protect the horses with their lives, but really they only need to protect the horses with their convenience. And Okay, so we're walking? Yeah, I think we, if we are walking, what do we need the uh, mercenaries for? Just to guard the entrance? Well, no. okay. Are we to, not, we're not on horseback? To clarify yeah. a couple of things about, like, mercenaries, horseback, etc., etc., Mercenaries don't go in a dungeon. They won't mm -hmm. go. Uh, mercenaries, however, will help you in overland encounters, which you've seen can be like 15 to 25 monsters at a time. Uh, yeah. uh, some monsters, when you when you encounter those spiders, they kill uh, save versus death on a single hit. Um, so that's the power of mercenaries is they can, they can guard you in the overland journey. Um, on the other hand, if you have horses, you can just get there really fast, uh, and then you'll have less encounters. 
you know so it's all a matter of cost benefit analysis you could and and also what you want to try to do right because maybe you're trying to march a whole bunch of resources you all were talking about bringing in teams of workers and all kinds of stuff right you if that's the case you probably need to build a group of mercenaries and go as this big group and you know um secure the entrance and etc but i mean yeah it Maybe. sounds like we have two realistic possibilities. We can either go on horseback or we can go on foot with like all our guys. Which, how do people feel about those two possibilities? Well, go on horseback go on ourselves. We we would then have to abandon the horses outside when we go in. So that's that doesn't that's work. That's another that problem with horses. Work. Yeah. All right. That option then. doesn't. That's off the table. We only have really one option. But what we were talking about the mercenaries. It may be a new goal that we should talk about afterwards for. Uh, Zelkers, there we lost the mercenary troop down there. We lost other things. We probably want to uh, to you know yeah. build up a force to have in the town, and once it's strong enough, we can take we can continue and then do that thing about you know building yeah. watchtowers or whatever later. And John actually, so John yeah. uh, brought something up. Uh, you all do have uh, not just a cart but a wagon. You all do yeah. have a wagon. It takes two horses to pull the wagon. And I'm saying that you can have a driver and one next to them and two uh, riders. So you can have four people with two horses using the, the wagon, but it can only go by road. So if something yeah. happens, you know, you can't just like charge off into the woods and, with a wagon. Comp the complexities of it. <laughs> I'm okay with either one. Yeah. I mean, the overland journey is riskier the, without a horse. So that's really my only input. Another thing I'll note, because uh, I'm not trying to bury any leads, but I'll shut up if I'm saying sharing too much stuff. But another thing that comes up in the overland journey is you found that some monsters are faster than you, and you've had yeah, to sacrifice survivors. human lives <laughs> to prevent the spiders too. We, uh, <laughs> yeah, the spiders and the wolves. Um, that was last week. The spiders. Well, you didn't Wait. sacrifice anybody. No, we, that just, was, they just grabbed somebody. But we lost to you. Yeah. yeah. But that's not a sacrifice. It was bad luck on them getting hit. But people did sacrifice people to the wolves in an every man for himself situation one but night. Absolutely. We could not run for those five years. Yeah. yeah. Horses with mercenary guards, right? Well, if we took the wagons, you could put the mercenaries in the wagons. And yeah. we have enough horses for us to to travel. Yeah, let's just do that, though. And okay, Mana do that. Mannequin does have a horse, is that right? He okay. does. I bought one for him last week. Alrighty, here we go. And next week we get new horses, so... Yeah, and then, the then this becomes less of an issue. All aboard the wagon. Then we have to worry about paying them for them. Yep. Well, if we can... The thing is, right now I can buy uh, horses. I just can't get horses in town. Let's make some bank. Bank time. I uh, now that I know the tokens, it takes me a second. I have to set it up. I also, what is the order of march? Like, who would be up front? Is it Alaric and Gerald? I'm up front as one of the people, definitely. Mm -hmm. And then, I assume the the actually the mercenaries would be in a second rank because they have pole arms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mannequin would probably be prepared to flank, and then maybe Caden, and then Magnus would be like way out in the back, like. Yeah. Um, and then I assume you'd have to fold her in around Magnus if you entered in a tighter space. Okay, I just gotta set this up because let's see. Here. <laughs> Rex is by my side at all times. By the way, I can't get Rex's actual stats to show yeah. up. I've tried reloading the character sheet a few times, but yeah, it's weird. Um, I got my dog too. Yeah, it doesn't matter that much, I guess. I think he's got seven hit points. I, uh, rain, maybe. I put it under bio and info. I assume you mean that it's not showing up there. If I oh no no like there this. it is. Never mind. I see it. I thought it was there's nothing on the actual no character. Yeah, us. I'm intentionally trying to keep it kind of simple. And this is the same thing for um, for your dog, Caden. AC twelve nine hit Ripley, points. Yep. D six plus two. Alert you danger two and six. So that's. It's a simple thing, and then eventually it'll evolve. Uh, anyways, I gotta set up the thing with the tokens now. Well, what kind of Pokemon does it turn into? 
No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, out of curiosity, uh, with war horses, uh, because I know nothing about this stuff, are stallions stupid picks for war horses, or like a war horse's stallions? Or, because I know for a normal horse, you wouldn't want one. I didn't notice that being a distinction in the text. Did it have different? No, I was just types? talking from a, a, a world, you know, like a knowledge point of view, not from a game. Oh, yeah, I have no idea. Okay, well, I'll assume then it's a stallion. Cause the, the thing is, they're very aggressive and stuff like that, and you don't want stallions as your as your riding horses because they're likely to want to ride another horse, and that's a problem. So, uh, yeah. You I know? figured after yeah. after you want their... neutered horses. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. You neuter them after yeah, for but gilding. Yeah, war horse, I'm thinking, I think you want, you know. Well, you keep one know. as a stud. I, I grew up on a horse farm. We bred yeah. horses. It's a disgusting affair, husbandry. Yes, but, um, I know this. Yeah, it, <laughs> absolutely gross. Having having friends over was not fun. But anyways, um, you don't care about actually proving the stud's worth. Uh, uh, the stud is just for breeding. You know, like, you know, okay. you don't. So, for example, you know, our our stud was a descendant of uh, what was that show horse's name? Um, I can't remember and I don't care. His name was Little Cricket, whatever. And um, Little Cricket would uh, never show in his whole life. He lived in a barn and he had sex. That was his whole job. He didn't do anything else. He never I showed. I can't tell if that's a good if that's good for a horse or. Bad I think it's a horse. miserable existence, even for a horse. I I actually feel really bad for the horse. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I googled. Those horses are usually stallions. For the yeah. Okay. So Every other male horse, as it's a gilding, once it's uh, after it's a foal, after it grows up a little bit. Actually, the first I process is to break their spirit, break them, choke them out, and then they learn that. Humans are the master, and then you. It's a really <laughs> disgusting business, in my yeah. opinion. Um, oh, I'm trying to find. Of... Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna. I'm actually doing something while I'm talking about growing up on a horse farm. Those that live in the middle of the country, I got my cool new hat the other day. Hat? Uh, yeah, it's, it's that. But that's the town I live in. 1660. Take that. <laughs> Where, show me again. Rye, New York, 1660. Oh, Rye, I got New a graveyard York. with like 17, early 1700s, 1720 and stuff like that. Things just within a short walk of my house. That's really cool. It I, is. Uh, my son has to cross a, 17, a 17th century and an 18th century graveyard on the way to school. Wow. There are very few things like that in the United States. Yeah, we were in another, we were actually in the oldest city, uh, it's about Four years ago, my father and mother, we went to St. Augustine. I was about to mention St. Augustine. Yep. yep, and that was so cool. And that is, the, it's like from the 1500s, been occupied. I, I would have thought, like, uh, West Coast was earlier than I thought, but it isn't. Uh, uh, San Diego is like 1725, because it came up while we were down in Florida talking about this. And it's like, I assume San Diego would be like maybe 1700, 17 or something. But no, it took them longer to get up that way. Even though they were here before the English, it still took them a long time to get up to the West Coast. Um, let's see. Uh, you all get the rest. You know, you get rest. And you find uh, at the at, at the gates, the secondary gates of Zelkor's Ferry, Egon is just ready to go. Uh, he's got like a backpack and a walking stick, and you notice he's carrying too much equipment. Um, wait a second, does he have a horse? No, he's going to ride with whoever's driving, and everybody else has a horse. That's what it is. Okay, um, and it is a. It's about 50, it's 57 degrees outside, 60 degrees, clear skies. I'm going to, actually, the visibility is good, so let me fix that. Visibility is, uh, well, it's not that good. We had a blood moon out tonight in the East mm -hmm. Coast. It was cool looking. Um, nice it's cool. Um, yeah, it's clear, beautiful day. Where do you go, uh, Gerald? Uh, we'll take the coastal path again, I think, if no one has objections. Oh, okay. 
Actually, no, there's a proper this? road if we go down the actual proper road. So, yeah. yeah, we're in a wagon. We'll take the proper road. We'll eventually build roads. Yeah, but this is... Yeah, it's down it the road. Be, it, would, it would be difficult <laughs> to justify building a second backup road to the mouth of doom, and we already have one. Yeah, you know, um, probably... Uh, in fact, um, I need to fix this map, but there is a natural foot and wagon path that has developed, um, mm -hmm. and it probably joins that road, and then there's one going into the forest here. Um, ah. Because uh, these are, there are, uh, as there, there's a wood camp here, a quarry here, and uh, a wood camp and uh, a stone quarry here. Um, and they're gathering resources and there's uh, fisheries and stuff like that people are trying to get up to. Um, I should have noted that they have seen strange things and some of the people trying to set up fisheries have been attacked. That's Ooh, something that what? you would have known about. Oh. Um, even if you hadn't asked around, you would have heard about it inevitably in the past week. Um, anyways, uh, you make it out to the road. Um, this road is getting, you know, well-traveled uh, is why I mentioned that. And so, it's, you know, it's not some sort of developed road, but it is passable, if that makes sense. Uh, in poor weather, that could become a problem. But you get to about this saddle, uh, and then near the tree line where, you know, you know those strange octopus-type sucker tree trunks are in the dark forest there. And um, make it up to about right there, and Gerald, you can roll a d6. Oh, boy. Are forest fires really bad? No. Uh, it depends They're strongly fun. on the forest. Some forests need saying, to burn. This forest, yeah, exactly. Like, I'm thinking this forest might need to burn eventually. Well, I, I was mean, thinking more in terms of, like, one down last week. week. Oh, let me tell you later about the forest fire my players started in the previous session. Okay, so we got a five. So we probably... It's not a one, so that's good. All right. Um, Gerald, um, you you see something. Um, and uh, let's see here. But it doesn't see you. Ooh. Uh, as you all are traveling along the road, you see a, a large number of armed humanoid things. They're about 110 yards off in the distance to your slight right front off the road. Uh, they are... Yeah, let me make sure. Yeah, about 110 yards off. I think it says me. And they, uh, they do not see you. What do you do? These are the early creatures we fought on that first... Well, I wasn't there for but the charge up the hill. I should note that these that are right? not the same creatures, but I don't have a token that represents what oh, okay. these look like. That's because I recognize oh, the token. I, I don't know why. Uh, I swear I have it in Roll20, so I don't know why, but they do look like kind of weird humanoids, but they don't okay. look... Yeah, those guys. They don't look exactly like the ones that you saw um, in the first encounter that you had. Caden, is this something that uh, patrols the area? Because, I mean, you know, that is part of what we have to be careful about. We don't want, you know, like big in yeah. intrusions into the area. These are the anyone... things we fought last week, right? They might be. I don't, well, I mean, we're, they're still Not like 300 spiders, feet but... off. Well, I'm, I'm not, go ahead. Okay. Gerald is 40 years old. I don't know, think, know if his vision is good enough to recognize like them at this range. Can we tell what they're armed and armored? with or like if they're armed and armored at all like the difference between 15 guys and 15 guys with spears is significant yes um so to answer john you you asked a, a question about the fiction um and they're 110 yards away so uh, if gerald brings you to a halt and says you know get behind the rocks be quiet you know and you you look off into the distance 110 yards is not that far you can see uh, Caden, that these things look just like the things that you saw la on your last adventure. And that means, so last the last time you fought these things, they had pole arms and short bows. And they were reasonably armed and armored. Yeah. I'll tell everybody about that. 
we have horses, if we decided to engage them, we could close in on them in one round and be among them. If we decided to engage them. I we, vote we do. All right. Rather than be attacked by them. I, I don't like the idea of these robots. I think if we attack and destroy enough of their bands, they're going to decide that this is not the area to be wandering around in. And these are definitely chaos creatures, right? Not oh, yeah. amenable to. Not, they're not amenable to parlay. They attacked uh, us. They have a turban. They have a turban of the god of death last time. Ah, uh, okay. If possible, I would allow. You know, when we're talking about, so I would, if possible, I would allow one of them to uh, to run away if they did, just for the sake of hopefully tell they'll tell other people about how spell. much we killed them, assuming we kill them and don't get killed. We could charm one of them if it needs to. Conceivably. Magnus, what wizardry have you at your fingertips today? I can send them to sleep. I can charm one of them. If you can... I'll say this. If you came here with sleep prepared, I don't think we'll find a better target for it than this. Yeah. How do the mercenaries feel about taking the initiative here? Did That's you... what they do, don't they? Uh, yeah, you, you asked. Uh, of course, you know, Egon is, like, ready. In fact, he's a little bit noisy. You have to kind of tell him to shut up. Um, he's risks uh, alerting where you are at. Um, uh, the mercenaries are like, well, uh, sir, um, we, uh, I don't know if you remember me, but I, uh, I fought last week. And, um, that's, that's I what I'm... The name. That's what I'm here to do, um, and it's clear to me, um, it's clear to me that uh, these things are causing a problem here. I don't know where they're coming from, but if if we don't stop them, eventually they'll gather together and they'll they'll make their way to those gates. All right, it seems I we agree. have a consensus. Yep. Let's, let's right. teach them the folly of fucking with men. What's Should their hit dice? A, a V attack. B, or you and I took both directions. I don't think we we don't have enough horses to arrange have, a, mul a multiple four. multiple four. attack, do we? We have four horses. That meaning people that aren't on uh, one, two, three. You, yeah, there's four of us that have individual horses. You you all, all may right, hate no. this, uh, <laughs> and I'm sorry, but I'm gonna roll this. Go you do, you do not have a war chariot, so this presents a problem. Right. That's not what you have. You have you have a a cart that has oh, two no, horses no, no, attached no, no. to it. So that, totally, that, creates, what... that creates a unique situation. You're missing two horses. Uh, that and, is true. And four people. Oh, and... I'm sorry. That's right. Sorry. So we have two horses. Sorry. Right. I have a war horse with, with Percade. Sure. So, yeah, you guys have horses. Uh, but four of you do not. Uh, neither do the dogs. All right. Right, I, I pictured four fast. horses and that, and then the wagon with horses. I forgot. It, two of our horses are used for the wagon. Yeah, so... so it will take a Kane's while, got one. That. I've got good shield and good armor. I might be able to bait them out and get them to come try to take the range, them. The range on sleep is 240 feet. Okay. We can bring them closer than that. And you're in combat, I think it... Don't they, like, triplet or whatever? You know, yeah, so. it's it's yards, two hundred and forty yards or whatever outdoors. So, all right. um, screen we, Magnus. We need to protect him so that he can get his spell off. All right. Well, they're surprised. So, uh, yeah. Magnus, you can go for it. It's a uh, they are, are they... one hit die plus one. Um, uh, and who else is on the? How else do we we want the horse? Uh, we got Caden on a war horse. I did not say I was bringing my war horse, so that likely means I brought Zephyr. Um, so you don't you don't get any benefits in combat if you have a regular riding horse. That no, there's one benefit: getting there fast is what I. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So and who do we want on the horse? Because I would volunteer to be on the horse if you want, because that way I could get in among them quicker. I could swap horses. I mean, I don't mind letting you use my war horse. Is that seven of them? Seven uh, of them. Okay, seven of them just fall over asleep. <laughs> All right. And my intent was to charge I'll, in if I'm on a horse. I'll let you use my war horse. I'll use your horse. Okay. I right. to swap with it. Yeah, what I was going to do is I was going to charge in, jump off the horse, and attack. You know, that's, yeah, that's I think I, 
I would like to okay. join him on that uh, on that approach if that's doable. Yeah, it's yeah. A, you you have surprise, so you can go ahead and do that. You can go ahead and move and attack and and do those things. Here we go. No, I guess we'll engage them when we have to. You guys just keep running up. We'll tie them in position. You're not going to ride, Caden? Well, I mean, uh, Alaric and Gerald are taking the horses, yeah. I think. Yeah, so we, we that's all the horses. Them. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, okay, yeah, so they start to move. Uh, I think you can move basically your regular distance anyway. So um, this would not, this would happen further up. Um, I just move them to, like, this would happen all the way up here. Because they, ha they happened at 110 yards, but you were able to... So, you know, you all can make it, you know, to the next cover, anyway. So that's useful. If you want to. It's up to you all. Anyways, uh, for the people charging in, you can go ahead and do all your attacks. And you can do um, Is however many. They're okay. 1D plus 1, so we, we can do it. Uh, your uh, uh, your target number is um, fourteen. Well, I got One a twenty, hit. so that's good. One hit for four. I got three hits for t uh, the first hit is a seven. The next one's a four. The next one's a nine. How okay. did you get four attacks? I'm oh, level you're a fourth four. level fighter. Yeah, big boys. Wow. Man. All right, you kill uh, you kill Just two of them and wound couple. another. All right, uh, and then let's see, you got two attacks, but you hit with or three attacks. You hit with one and you wound one of them. Gerald, do you remember how I kept rolling low and missing and stuff like that? All of a sudden, when I get four attacks, I seem to roll better too. I don't what, understand what? that. All right, Gerald, it's, you, it's all a trick of the light. What about missile weapons? Yeah, you could fire a missile weapon, whatever the range is on your, if you have a sling. Uh, and then no, no, it's can, Monopin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Might you hit somebody? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, if you fire uh, and you miss, there's a chance you will hit your allies. Oh, I figured there was a, like a row back there that was not in melee. And actually, that's fair, because this was a surprise round, and I just didn't organize it. I just said attack. Uh, but missile fire actually goes first, so you can arc them over while they're coming in to do that. So yeah, you could fire your missile weapons. Oh, I'll take a sling though. That's a miss. They no, get no, two no, shots, no, don't no, they? No, no, no. Caden, you two moved. So oh. you, you can either All move. Right, they didn't move. Right, okay. Yeah. Just a couple of misses. Sorry, I thought they were shoot. So the good news is there I can replace your arrows later. This is true. Before we were running real low, I had like 11 arrows left. All right. There was a uh, weird interval where we were tremendously arrow poor. Well, I already rolled it. Sorry. Gerald, roll a d6. Rolling. One. Uh oh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they are going to um, move and attack. Their goal is going to be to try to put these big beefy fighters down as fast as they can. So they A move very around and, intention. until they can get into melee. Uh, and then three of them are going to attack each of you. Alrighty. My armor class is effectively 17 thanks to my parrying capability. And you just had to say that, didn't you? With this math, I, I if it's did. a if it's HD one plus one, does that mean they get a plus two to attack? They, there's a line in the tape in your thing that tells you how much they get. So if if they're not a ten in that line, that's what the plus they get. Ten is the base. I think HD one plus one means a nine to hit, right? So it would be plus one. I don't know. I don't. I don't have the chart in front of me. Okay. It just says one D. Yeah, it doesn't describe what. Uh... I think, one eight, hit is I think an 18 dead. hits, though, right? It would, yes. So Alaric. if they're 1 plus 1, I'll look it up. So, Alaric, you uh, you take 1 point of damage. And Gerald, uh, they miss. Uh, they are terrified. I forgot to roll for morale. But they pass, surprisingly. And that makes it your roll's turn. Anyone firing missiles, then go ahead and do that now. Or... If you're casting a spell, go ahead and announce that. No spells, no missiles. Yeah, because if you fire um, a missile, you'll potentially yeah. hit somebody. 
guess I'll not do that this time. Okay. Um, I am going to cast Sleep again, however. Nice. I nice. can. Wow. Level 3 Wizard. Level 3 Magic Use. Pretty. That's powerful. I'm gonna. I can attack and move, right? Oh, oh. You move, then you can attack. Yeah, okay. Alright. Like, yeah, okay. They all fell asleep. Oh, I thought spells go off. Okay, never mind. Well. You know. <laughs> yeah. I think okay. it doesn't doesn't matter. They're they're toast. So, um, yeah. Uh, what what? How many do you decide to keep alive? I guess is the only question. One, right? right. We we yeah. can slit the, the throats, arrange the bodies all around them, and let the guy wake up on yeah. his own. Oh my, oh my gosh! Yeah. Hmm. Create a I mean, pyre. I mean, chaos creatures. So, it doesn't really care. Yeah, but we aren't. Is it healthy for us to behave in such a way? Like what? Slaying them all and well, letting them rot? But I don't know. There's not I much mean, to be done about it. I think I, I, I propose that you're both right in a bit of a, a sense. I want to I want to validate both of these things. Uh, first of all, I agree. One of the things I really like is in the basic set, the example of play, mm-hmm. where the where the characters like noble denizen of the underworld or whatever and they, she tries to talk to him and then he just he's just like ah he's just like there to stab but you know they still treat it because they're noble you know so they they still try to parlay with it anyways uh we don't I, have any ropes so actually wait no we do have ropes. i i want to note i don't think it's a chaotic action to create some sort of message like uh i mean the fact is you're already murdering you're killing them right and they're trying mm-hmm. to fight they're trying to kill you so you know war is not it's too late to try to make something pretty out of it like it's a, it's, it's bad true. it's just bad anyway so uh if it were me to to me uh it, if you treated them with respect it would be to actually burn them right because mm-hmm. because otherwise they're going to get eaten they're going to be carrying right yeah and, yeah so I, I suggest all that to say that a, a display of um, sending a message to me is not chaotic. I just want to. Right, and my reasoning for arranging the bodies around them, so the remember the the guy doesn't know that they all went asleep. He doesn't know how this. If we arrange the bodies around them, have them all bloodied and and stuff like that, he wakes up. He thinks he he was left for dead, and these people were slaughtered. And he didn't even see it happen. It was just yeah. that fast. Like and some, it makes us look it's scary like some as all hell. Navy SEAL stuff going on. People right. are just disappearing. I agree firmly. And then, and then yeah, they're just like, we got to get out of here. Yeah. We'll, we'll leave some of the the first ones you dropped when the ambush. We'll leave a couple of them alive. The others, kill them uh, mercifully as you can. What were you going to say, John? A couple of them? Actually, leaving two alive is actually a better bet than leaving okay. only one alive because what if one of them gets killed otherwise. Ah, uh, yeah, and that way they can get back and say, hey, look, just leave this place alone. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. you you all... Uh, what are these creatures, these guys? Yes. Like, we don't have a name for them, right? Let's, let me, uh, let me, let me find a picture and post it and I'll show you exactly what they look like. Cool, because then I can name them. I, I name things name. based on pictures. Oh, yeah, I remember the... What, the uh, moss devils? Yeah, the Moss Devils was one of them, right? Hmm. Yeah, you know, I I that thought was a troll, I, by the way, I thought I had uh, the the token in here, so I don't know, but this is they look like humans. Um, th- one of the things that's really peculiar, and I think I mentioned this last time, is while most of this armor is bloodied and pieced together and probably not very useful for your purposes right now, they have been armed and armored which is not something you could say for, say, the goblins and the kobolds and things you've encountered. Um, they do have, like, grisly maces that they've constructed like that one has. I don't have a good name for them, but since they are armored and everything like that, uh, first thing that popped in my mind was Chaos Warriors. Ooh. Sure, that works. That's cool. Warriors of Chaos, yeah. That's wild. The and, word that sprang to my mind was Cabalites, but I'm just stealing that from 40k. Yeah, you d- and you do find uh, another among them a, a symbol of uh, the god of death uh, of of the uh, the Isles of Destroy Alba. it. 
Let's let's step on it and crush it under heel near the guy's yeah. one of the survivors' Destroy face. Destroying it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some okay. Man, yeah. All right. Uh, I need to make a note of that. We just crush it and leave it there and and like you know where they can see it clearly and it's just like we didn't even care. We just broke it and left it. Uh, Magnus, this victory is a testament to your arcane power. I'm very pleased to have you with yes. us. Great Saved a rest. lot of damage. Oh, I echo all of your sentiments. <laughs> <laughs> it's not available for our next battle, unfortunately. Well, yeah. I don't think we'll find a better match if we sleep. So, their, uh, their gear, uh, it's, it's crap, right? Uh, you will get some gear that's useful, kind of in a pool, if you search all their stuff, some gear and money. We'll toss it in the wagon, yeah. we'll yeah. work out the details later. Even if it's just raw iron, that's useful. Take all their clothes. Yeah, I do intend on, on trying to, you know, up production as much as possible, because I think I want to stockpile arrows for the town, I mean, at basically, uh, uh, my cost, just so we can get the, uh, uh, them to get gear, so we would be it would be a smart thing to stockpile armor that we can recover and keep that at the at the hound's place for the sake of uh, outfitting people when we need it. Right. Okay. You uh, you make it about right here, um, and you have like this the old uh, the old you know cabin. Uh, this area, by the way, is miles south of kind of I'll kind of draw. Uh, the border of where the workers are and even that it would be like a far border far like this is not where most people go uh, This is miles beyond into the wilds, you know as experienced as you all are and as often as you've come here So that's why this this area is still left undisturbed and this is kind of like the wastelands and wilds of the place um, Where did we fight those guys? We're gonna we're gonna look for uh, spider sign here very carefully. Okay. You see no spider signs. There is this swath of forest that's destroyed and charred. Um, yep. You know, trees burned down, just a swath of destruction. Um, what happened there? Oh, that's the forest fire you guys started. <laughs> and then um, and then you hear something peculiar. Uh, you hear uh, something... Uh, let me see if I can find it. You hear the flapping of giant wings, uh, uh -oh. and then and you and then you hear something like just screech, scream overhead. Okay. Oh, that's, that's not that's long. not a good one. This one would be something more like it. I think this is it. It sounds like that. And then this like huge beast just flies overhead and then passes off to the east. And I just looked directly at Egon. Yeah, I don't Egon, know what that was. E Egon like has his knives out and he's like, that is amazing. It is. And the I decided I enjoy Egon's company. Mer the he's so upbeat. <laughs> the mercenaries are like, just you can tell they're kind of afraid. This is not good to them. Same. Uh, well, my humana, humana, humana. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, what what do you was do? that? It was. Can we get a color, a size, a? And by the way, no, I'm not referring to that. I'm just saying, uh, is it right. a dark thing? Is it a? Uh, you know, what was this you, thing? You can was tell it that it, You could tell that it was. First of all, as a flying beast, it seemed to be reptilian, gigantic. And no, there wasn't like a kind of size. It was a sort of like a. Uh, was that? Or I'm sorry, not not a, uh, a oh, color. Like a dragon? No. Worse. Did we just see a dragon? A sky crocodile. No, no, I think the dragon is pretty pretty standard. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I love it, sky crocodile. Sky. <laughs> oh, oh! I heard a hilarious story, which I'm going to give you the punchline of it. I do not like the uh, the cobra chicken. The, no it was an immigrant. Yeah, it was an immigrant uh, talking about like um, he didn't know the word for uh, geese. Yeah, they called them chicken. cobra yeah. chickens. Yeah, because they hiss at you and they get aggressive. Uh, apart That's from awesome. that, oh wait, I uh, the, the the wagon can't go in the woods, so right. you 
-hmm. you disembark and have the guards yeah. stand here? Okay. Yeah, we kind of put them, you know, like maybe in the burned area of the wood, just the beginning of it, you know, just so I could take them yeah. off the front line. They, they know, still not... uh, of note, something that, you know, like, they, these people experienced, they were... Um, yes, both of these were here for the battle last week, and they saw their friend die, and that was one of the things that they saw their friends leave, like three of them after that, like leave your service. So like this is them returning to that side and then standing guard. But they, they do that. They disembark, and they're like, once again, we'll be here, sir. We'll guard this with our lives. Might be with you. And with you also. All right. Now, if you Back. remember, we gave the Bjorn guy quite a, a bonus afterwards, didn't we? The adventurer. The Bjorn? Uh, I oh, should the have, adventurer. Sorry. Yeah, I should have noted he would have been available. So that's not fair. But you don't have horses, so yeah. you would have had to have picked. But he is—he's—he's he's hanging around actually. Good. Um, but yeah, where's well, Gilver? He's, he's still. Gotta uh, get these guys better kit. Gilver is another option, actually. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's also another option. I but, think I told him to stick, stay home this time, just to, like, recuperate and, and focus yeah, on the home did. guard. That's what you were saying before. Yeah. Like, like he's stable, yeah. but I don't want to drag him down to the death hole again. Not so quickly. It's your last mission, anyway. Yeah. If he saw me die down here after all that, like, come on. It's too much. We gotta get money for your retirement. If you guys see me die, you'll cope. But him, he'd crack again. Um, you will cope, know. right? Kate, Kate might be upset. You're allowed to be upset. What, what do you mean? Of course you're going to be upset. Of course you'll be sad. I'll I'll be dead. You better be sad. That's right, man. <laughs> um, you uh. Except for Krogan, he's a sociopath. Yeah, that, yeah, it's true. That guy's terrifying. But he's a, but he's guy. a useful him. sociopath. Yeah, I love him. I love him. It's our, a, yeah, he he's our be. sociopath, I guess. Our favorite car crash of a person. He's our Doc Holiday. <laughs> Okay, uh, so you, you go into activating the... my brain scan. So we go south from the main room to it. Uh, there's the main room has six doors in it. Uh, the south one, the one directly opposite the uh, stairs when we exit. If we go th south through that, we'll reach a T intersection. If we turn left and advance to the next T intersection, that should have a pit trap uh, filling most of the T intersection, which is open. And if it's not open, we'll poke it till it does open, and then we'll take a step around the edge. Uh, I'll point out to Egon how it functions, etc. Then we take a windy corridor that takes us past. We take a right, a right, a left, a left. We pass several doors in the way. One of the after the second left, uh, on our left side, we will pass a empty barracks. Then we take another left and a right, and then we're in the room with the green fire, which I believe is still just blazing there. On the left wall on that side, there should be a secret door, which we have been through many times. Pop that open, there's a crawl space. Takes us out from under a statue into a room that used to have a lot of the leeches till we killed them all. And on the wall opposite the entrance, there is a door, and on to our right side, uh, once we come out from under the uh, s statue, there is a stairwell down. We're not going down that stairwell, we're going through the door. Once we go through the door, we, go, we reach a a four-way intersection with a door on our right, which led to where we found Gelver, a door on our left, which I don't think we've... I can't remember what's in it, uh, and a pit trap in the center. If we poke the pit trap, uh, we can open that up, and on the wall uh, facing west, there is a secret door, which leads to a ladder down, which is the path we have taken to this second floor in the past. Uh, and I we took pythons and rope so that we can make a... Uh, usable exit uh, for uh, when we need to leave. And if we take that down, that should take us to the second floor. Do I remember correctly? You got it. Uh, yes, it hasn't mutated since we left. Um, actually, let me just gather you all from this map. That will be easier. So, Caden in the back in order to protect Magnus uh, and Mannequin, yeah, the dog sure. next to you all, and then Gerald Alaric up front. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'll bring my dog this time too. I'll put the thief next to Caden, so you kind of kind of have one thing there. Um, yeah, and then you have your dog next to you in the back as well. Okay, and then right, who's carrying the dog down the ladder? 
Yeah, I assume that you all come up with some yeah, means of doing that. Yeah. Rope, back, um, rope basket, backpack for dog. Now, yep. I, I would say something, and then, um, you know, if it becomes a complication, it will be one, though. I will note that, but I, yeah. I assume that you have some means of doing that. Now, um, dog harness. <laughs> like a like a suitcase. Who has a uh, who has a um, these are big dogs. Who has the torch? Is it Magnus? And is it a torch? I have or a lantern. Lantern. Okay. Lantern's good. All torch right. is more of a backup. Here I've got backup go. fuel if you need it. Maybe Egon can carry the other one. I think he needs both hands for stabbing. Oh yeah. You know, man with two knives, he's a happy man. <laughs> so, so the Eastern mystics have said. Yes. Happy is the man who knives, or something. Anyways, um, <laughs> so you uh, you descend down uh, this ladder and you come down into this long corridor. Uh, you can even see where your uh, your feet have trod here in the past. The dust having been uh, not unsettled or uh, they've been uh, left alone you can even see your footpaths nothing has traveled through here you think since you've last been here um, okay. um, yeah and you don't have a ranger so where do you go we do have dogs though you do have dogs you do have dogs let me, let me see if the dog would know something let me roll. The dogs would not notice. Never mind. Everything is fine here. So you go north, you said. Um, and then I think the base armor is a ma base movement rate of nine. Is that right? I believe we're all at nine, yes. Okay. Uh, the first decision point that you come to uh, is the doors that lead into uh, a room to the left. Uh, do you continue or do you investigate that? We should We've already visit. examined this room in some detail, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we have a, a, a path that we have not overcome yet. That's the, um, the westernmost thing that's broken, but we were first trying to see if we can address it maybe because since this leads into this outside hallway, we were wondering before we'd spend a lot of time figuring that out, let's see if the outside, if there is an outside hallway on the other side that leads to it. And yes. if it doesn't, it might be a treasure room that we have to find our way to. Because you know, the south one was a treasure room. We don't know if the west one's a treasure room. If we can't access it from a, we have not yet discovered western corridor, then that probably means it's a dead end treasure room that we have to fight our way toward. I know we're going back towards uh, where we fought those guys last time, I think. That's right. I was thinking, yeah. And this time, you know, whether or not you want to engage them, we could try to go past them if you want, but we may eventually have to engage them anyway. Hmm. Let's try circumnavigating north for now. How do people feel about that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Northward. All right. And we did find another passageway, as you'll look on the map, uh, past the gargoyle area uh, that goes to the east, but we didn't continue down there. That's where we speed ended, right at that section, the high pillar gotcha. and everything. So you we, come, there's a passageway that continues that way. You, okay. you come to a door uh, where there's some rubble around you in places. Uh, near the door are some greasy stains uh, that have long since dried but are still sticky your light continues onto a corridor long off and to the left and to the right. Uh, your These voices, stains are from where we... Uh, your voices echo down here in the dark. You find that your lantern light sputters and gasps for air. You feel this sense of dreamy disorientation often as if you're sometimes walking uphill slightly and then sometimes walking downhill. Um, but... Um, not trusting in your senses, you rely on your reason and memory uh, so far to navigate. Sorry, go ahead. This, the grease stains, this is where we slew some rats, isn't it? Do I remember that rightly? Oh, that was the mosquito thing. Oh, yes, that was hard. All right. And that way leads to the lava room. 
And that way leads to the hallway. Circumnavigate the lava room, yes. Uh, yeah. to our right. Okay. Uh, we'll, go, we'll go right. How did you go wrong? Starboard, then. Oh, I actually did that wrong. Okay. Ten minutes of dungeon time pass. Um, is anyone mapping, and do you... Uh, at the, who is mapping, actually? Not, not me. Yeah, you have to hold the... You have to hold the lantern. So just I have as, to hold a weapon. Just as a reminder, um... Uh... And, you know, I'll say you can hold a weapon and map, you know, we can kind of metagame that. Uh, but the mapper gets the same XP as the caller now, and the treasure keeper. Uh, they all You all get the same XP. The downside, you don't have to map, but there are two big downsides to not mapping. One is that if you tell me that you're going to flee, I move to Theater of the Mind and I take this battle map away, and you go into a random place. The second downside to not mapping is if you discover a new way down, you don't get to keep it. For your character, is kind of like a thing that you discover. Right. Okay. One, yeah, one sec, I'm setting up a map thing. Uh, open more from Earl. Yeah, if nobody uh, wants to map, I, I can pull out, uh, uh, you know, no. like uh, square sheets, but... No, I've got the mapping app open. Just awesome. Make a second layer. I only do it on paper. Okay. Good to go. All right. Um, at what point? You just tell me at what point you want me to start describing the dimensions and and lengths. Okay. Yeah, because like, because I know some of it you already have, right? So yeah, we're gonna walk to, at normal pace up until we get right. to one of those areas. Okay. You just tell me when we get there and be like, whoa, well, whoa, go back or something, you know? Okay. So you make it to about right here to this corner, and when you make it to that corner, by that point, twenty minutes has passed. Um. And then, at this point, you come to, I think, the next decision point. I'm just checking real quick. Yep. The next decision point you see here on your lantern light is there's a door here um, to your left. And then a another door further down. In this place here, you can see that in... in places the the walls are stone the ceilings about 15 feet high above you uh, it's about um, should be yeah 20 feet 20 feet wide corridors they're actually gigantic they're huge you know um, to walk down uh, you could actually probably walk four abreast if you wanted to um, don't worry I don't have you in that order of battle so Magnus I know you're not spearheading the charge I get it um, and then there are these big fat cobwebs, which you can tell you've since torn aside in places, uh, and they've fallen from the walls and disintegrated into dust. In other places, they still hang on, and they're eons long, useless, uh, hanging from the walls and the ceiling. We're going to keep going, right? Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah, we'll skip the empty room to our left, as well as the, the thoroughly explored corridor that led to the uh, the spider adventure, past the winding corridor where we encountered the skeletons that one time. On our right side, I believe there's the room where our uh, our thief, who was restored from death, first met it. And our left side is uh, the room where we encountered the weird cultist whose magic yeah. hat was stolen by the murderer. Yeah, the one with the This guy. The bad dude. Um, uh, I think... Oh, sir, go ahead. Well, I think we were planning to keep going. You wanted right. to circum... You want to circ try to circumnavigate to the opposite side yeah. of the, uh, the lava, yes. Yeah, because that'll let us know if we have to figure out that puzzle, because if we can't get to the other side of the lava room, I'd like to find out what's on the other side of the lava room. And if we have to kill those guys. Yeah. 
Okay. It's not going to be fun. 30 minutes of dungeon time has passed. And now, I have that you're going to continue west. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I believe we're going to head towards the, uh, the spot where the corridor tilts to the left, past the door that led to, uh, like, yeah, the humanoid approaching monster. The, yeah, we're approaching the mapping area pretty soon, as soon as we start going southwest, yeah. you know, the fake directions. I warn Egan to be very quiet. Do you want to bust a bear and kill those guys, or...? What do the rest of you think? Well, I hate having people around us, but there were a good a uh, good number of them, and they likely went for reinforcements so they could probably do the same thing again. But I'm always all for destroying, uh, uh, you know, freaking agents of chaos that are actually yeah. camped to true trouble as opposed to wandering around. I don't want yeah. to be the podcast. All right. So then we, before we get to this point, we should, because we would have talked about this, we should discuss what our tactic's going to be. Uh, we only know of one entrance that we know of. I'm looking at the map that doesn't appear to be another entrance to the hallway that we see. It could be on the other side of that slant. Mm -hmm. uh, Checking our weapons, our, our, any unusual weapons we might have. Now, our what happened last time is that we, we were... Uh, you know, like, uh, what do they call that? Uh, narrow. Fatal uh, funnel. Yeah, but what's the word for when they block you at something? Because I have English problems every once in a while. What is it? Uh, funnel. Uh, funnel. Nah. But anyway. They, nah, let's move on. Uh, we only had two people at the front and we couldn't get in. Um, mm -hmm. So we were going to be fighting those two people, which is fine because we had two tough people at the front. But, the, you know, they get a lot more attacks because they're using uh, spears and stuff like that. I think what we want to do if we're going to do this is bust in literally and just, you know, like break the door down and go in or smash, you know, open the door yeah. and come in running before there's a setup. So that way, hopefully we get that first movement action as their our initiative uh, and and we can position ourselves in the room. We open have less people assault. now. We have less people now. Do we want to or do we instead want to be in that sort of position where where we're only at the door uh, because we have less people than the last time. So I think we have more people. Ones. Oh, we do? Oh, okay. Then even better. Then we should definitely charge it. Okay. Um, That's me. Uh, I, I don't have the best, you know, yep. okay. nuance it's, play. It's, but... it's not good timing, but I have to, the dog's losing her mind, so I need to take care take her out real quick. Okay. Please, uh, Menachem shoots whenever he can and stabs people if they get too close. All right. Understood. Got it. I assume... He Egan, I assume that Egan is strongly in favor of directly confronting, uh, like, the ruinous powers. Well, and all of their servants. Why does creatures. Magnus have an aura around him? Oh, I apologize. I did that. It's a 30 foot radius to indicate the uh, light that he is shedding with his oh, lantern. Oh, I have dynamic lighting. You're only going to be able oh, to see you? what he's shedding, yeah. If, uh, oh, nice. if, if you see it, he's got light on it. Alrighty. I thought I, I thought it was magic or something, but okay. So, uh, sorry. What was you were asking a question? Other than that, what is? I assume Egan, Egon. is Egon is he's, very enthused at the yeah, prospect. Yeah, he's got his his two his two daggers out, and he's like, "All right, this is the moment. This right. is this is Egon's Kate, moment." How is your? Yep. How much healing magic do you have prepared? Uh, two, two okay. cure light wings. And you have you have a light spell. And Magnus yeah. has a uh, charm spell. Okay. And I brought a whole person as to the final caps and stuff. And I'm confused. I keep I heard he's talking about Menachem. I thought it was Magnus. Magnus uh, has a uh, a goon, I think. Got it. Yeah. That's where it was. All right, that makes total sense now. Yeah. And Menachem just sort of waves from the background. Hi, I'm here. Yeah, he's. I, I keep him quiet because I don't want to take the focus off you all. But he's okay. a level five thief. Awesome. Okay. So, Caden, uh, Alaric, it sounds like you were both in favor of an assault. Do I understand you correctly? Yeah. Okay. Door open in or out? Well, yeah, that's an important question. This door. So, let's describe the area around you here. So, you get to this place here, you see a, a door uh, that's open. Um, uh, and that's how you left it 
leading into a corridor beyond here um, to the edge of your light into a circular chamber and then to uh, to to uh, uh, continuing on ahead of you you see the corridor slant off to the left onto the edge of your light and then there's a door here this door is open just it as is. It, just as if it was as if you left it last time wait the southern door yeah this uh the southern door is open and it we actually opened. thought did we leave and spike it so to give us more time when yeah we, ran away? we did yeah and the so circumstances we, evolved okay so it's open it's inward possible. or yeah, it opens. It, it opens inward, and it has been opened inward, and you can see where the spikes have been ripped yeah, out yeah. of the stone. Oh, maybe we somebody had... else came here and killed them. Yeah, maybe. Let's check it out. So, let's we still burst with, in. Yeah, we advance yeah. with incautious, uh, you know. Yeah, we charge it. Forcefulness. Gotcha. Push our, we push our way in. We Do command the, the space. Spanish Inquisition. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. You just bust into the room. Little, but... Yeah, and. Um, you see that there's a bunch of like nasty smell. The smell in here is awful. Uh, there are uh, things. We didn't warn them about that. Uh, it looks like these are people's clothes uh, that that have been put into bedding, made into bedding. Uh, there is a table and two chairs here, as well as uh, what was a, a, a campfire, uh, a bit of debris here in in the place. Um, there's a door. In the northeast wall. Now, for map, does this need to be mapped, or did you map it last time? Uh, some of we, it was mapped. Yeah, so we got the main some notes. This is uh, okay, so it's seventy feet north to south, and it's uh, forty feet east to west. Four by eight, I guess. With a door on the northeast wall and on the southeast wall. Uh, yeah, let we me only make got sure, the northeast wall door before. Make sure that I'm not missing anything here. Um, let me just make sure. The secret door on the on the second square from the left, perhaps. Is it that? Yeah, something weird. No, going I'm on joking. There. I'm joking. I don't know if a secret door on this door. No, I see. I see it too. There's something on the left side. The yeah, side uh, the, right I'm, here. Are you talking about? Where, where can you ping it? What you're talking about? No, actually, I was okay. literally joking. I see what you're talking about. That looks like something. Uh, like yeah. something on the wall, like a painting or something. Uh, yeah, when you look at this, you see a metal grating. Um, oh. It looks as if it's meant to to uh, allow for drainage or ventilation or something. Oh. Um, yeah. And um, hmm. let's talk over there. North door. Yeah. We. Okay. We'll prepare to so, breach the north door. And maybe have, since we're not going to use bows, whoever has a bow, train it on the south door while we breach the north door, and then they can follow in after us if people don't start charging out of the south. Gladly. Yep. Just looking at a few things here. Because we don't know if those are two entrances to the same area or not. Okay. All right, sorry, uh, Gerald. Where, where, where to next? All right, I believe we are going. Put your attention on the map. I believe our intention is to go through the north door, the one I'm pinging now. All right. Gerald uh, has a. He's going to let Alaric breach, and he's going to hang back around here with his bow out and an arrow knocked in preparation to attack anything that comes through the north, or from the south, in response to any noise which we might make breaching the north door. All right, uh, Alaric, you. Um... How, what do you do to open the door? If it looks like it opens inward, I'm going to uh, quickly turn and try to open it. If I feel resistance, I'm going to quickly drop back, take a big, you know, like plopping foot kick yeah. forward. Okay, it, it opens fairly easily. You push the bevel, this big, heavy, you know, um, uh, bloated wooden door. Um, that is ancient rusted iron banding um, it's not too loud when it creaks open no louder than you all are clinking in your armor here and you can hear each other breathing down here you know don't make me self-conscious uh, but apart from that uh, it's not too loud and Alaric you, you you enter into the room I'll give you a 
light. This room appears to be empty. Uh, the stone, it's a, it's a square room that's uh, 35 by 35 feet. Uh, in the corners are uh, makeshift beds that uh, people have made, uh, what do you call those things? Um, hammock. Hammock, thank you. Yeah, they've made hammocks out of it and then a little straw bit, you know. But apart from that, there is nothing of interest in this room. It's an empty room. Other door? Other door. Okay, I'll put you all together. Um, you can, of course, edit the order of march here as you need. You go down to the southern door, and what do you do there? I cover the north. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. You, who opens the door? Alaric, I believe. Yeah, I, we, we should, but right now we're in the middle of what, we're going to treat this as all one room. We should rotate it later on. Yeah. Uh, I am going to... Oh, I mean, I can swap it. No, 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 this is, this is the same thing. We're just doing a, a breach. Okay, I'm going to uh, try to turn the knob. If I don't feel a resistance, I'm going to, you know, follow through and, and come in, you know, break in and like as if it's I'm going into combat and give room for the people to follow behind me so you know, I'll break left or right whichever way there's room and establish a beachhead if the door doesn't we're going to have like a uh, I lean back against somebody and kick forward as hard as I can to bust it open um it seems I'm trying to do, I'm trying to do it fast it does seem as if the door is um is jammed so uh, you can make a uh, sure. force door check. Dice time, dice time. I think that works for you, right? Yep, yeah, that so. is definitely within my range. Boom, you kick open the door. It kicks inward. Um, and you see, uh, let me describe for you here, a long hallway. Uh, this, uh, this hallway, uh, like many of the corridors, is 20 feet wide, but the, the length is about 70 feet long. It continues on. Let me move up Magnus just, you know, because you know, it's right there. For the left. But it's, you know, uh, being 70 feet long, it's right at the edge of your lantern light. You see three doors to the south. Um, um, I signal in, and I head toward the south one. I'll be right back. Oh. Well, okay, well, I'll actually need to wait until he comes back for what's about to happen. So, uh, I will describe the rest of it while we wait. Uh, there are three iron doors that you can see along the southern wall. Each has a small barred window in the center of the door. And uh, at the far end of the room is a demonic face. And when, uh, when Alaric kicks open the door, something shoots from its mouth. Hello. I'm just using Magnus as a... just for the torch. And I'm also going to pan the camera for everything so I can see it on my end. Just trying to get this map to look comprehensible. What would be the plan? Um, I'll tell you, regardless of what happens with this object that hits him, uh, nothing else seems to happen. So, you know, what what is your next? What's your plan after uh, after we figure out what's going to happen with Alaric? Uh, probably render first aid and then check the other doors. Yeah. Okay. If he lives. Uh, when you all go in, nothing seems to happen. Um, 
It doesn't like shoot it again or anything like that. So we'll see. Uh, and uh, maybe you check the doors. All right. Yeah. Uh, which door do you check? Uh, no, you're going to have to take the first one, I guess. Is he, is he a thief? I don't know. Uh, Gerald is going to, before we continue, Gerald is going to set up, Gerald has a lantern of his own. He's going to set it up in this room, uh, like on this wall, so that Sorry, it illuminates, so that it illuminates north, and he's going to cover the exit with his bow. Interesting. Um, uh, it, uh, several things happen so I wanted to move ahead and, and kind of figure out the plan um, uh, Dan are you back with us yes I am okay so let's travel back in time to when Alaric kicked open the door so Alaric uh, you kicked open the door let me actually move everyone back out except Magnus I'm kind of using just to put it just at the edge there so you kick open the door as soon as that happens something flies from the far end of the room uh, make a save, a dexterity save. Is one weakness. Ah. Awesome. Not bad. Why it is there two dice? It flies past you and it strikes the far, uh, the far, uh, into the grate. Um, and, uh, yeah, you, uh, avoid whatever flew out of that thing's mouth. Meanwhile. Oh! Yeah, maybe we should rotate that whole door thing sooner. <laughs> We're going to check the doors for traps, I think. All right. Um, yeah, so... Uh, and then while this is happening, you, you know, you notice he, he dodges that. Uh, and then, Gerald, you come outside. You put a lantern on so that you can see. You set it down, and you set up, like, a firing position for the, mm -hmm. the north door, right? Yeah, I'll just in case something weird comes... We're, we're in a cul-de-sac, as far as I can tell, so I'm worried about stuff sneaking up behind us. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, who is checking the door, and what doors are you checking of the three iron doors? Some of you with these skills, probably. It's Egon time. Okay, you ha also have a level five thief, uh, but uh, I can have Oh, Egon. sorry, I thought Egon was also a thief. Well, uh, he's a level one thief. This. It's Chris's dude. Yeah, so probably better the to let first. Henchman first. Uh, is that okay, uh, Chris? Uh, mannequin? Is that okay? Can you hear us? Maybe he's doing still, something with the dog. dog I think he's still stuff. handling his dog emergency. Aha. Yes, well, in that case, I will take Mannequin. And uh, he is going to. Or you want him to check the door for traps or something? Is that kind of. Uh, Yes. Yeah, after after what just happened. Uh, let me move Flanagan down, Gelver down, Magnus up, and I think that's it. Okay, Mannequin is going to do his check. I usually allow for both. Um, no, actually, in the super old school game, I don't. What it is is if you can describe it in the fiction and get it, I give it to you. Otherwise, he's got to do um, uh, delicate tasks and traps. Get a 35. He fails. I know this is supposed to be in secret, but... Uh, anyways, uh, that being said, he checks the door and this, is, this takes a round. It has been now an hour of dungeon time. Uh, he's like, I, I, I don't hear anything. What do I do? All right. Whose turn is it to open the door? Next one after A. That would be... Uh, that would be G. My turn, then. Jeff. Yeah. All right. I will breach the door. You leave the uh, the lantern there? Yeah. Alaric, take uh, take my position at the, uh, the exit. I will do that. Thank you. Okay. First door. Okay, I'll... Spin y'all around here, and uh, I am actually going to do this because it's about to become important. Oh. Okay. You. Uh, how do you? What do you do with the door? How do you open it? 
So you said you're opening the door. How do you open it? Okay. It opens outward or inward? Uh, it seems to uh, to open toward you. Outward, okay. I guess. All right. Uh, I will open it. I will pull it back using the door for cover as I go. So that All I right. pull it to the side. Must, so that You start to do that and several things happen all at once. Uh-oh. Uh, Gerald Uh-oh. and Alaric can roll a d6. Four. Four? Okay. Oh. I feel like we're being attacked from both sides. No. Not again. Um, I think this is how this happens. All of a sudden you open the door and you see several things in here and all the other doors open when you Uh-oh. open it. It's a trap. There is. It is a trap. And um, these things come out. Like, they, they all, like, jump out, right? Um, and uh, and then, you know, Gerald's there in the door. Uh, <clears throat> and Alaric, you look behind you. You know, you see this stuff going on. And all of a sudden, yep. the grate just flies off. And these things, uh, these, these... I did big... not... Okay, I was going to say... You know, Uh-oh. I'm being very wary, but nope, that's not what I was being very wary with. The, these these hound-like things, they're probably the things that mm. are able to just pounce. So they, over here is a surprise round. Uh, over dead. here is not a surprise round. Gerald, you can roll a d6. All right. Four. Four, okay. And I'll roll for them. A five, they're able to go first. Um, wow. Okay. Uh, Why does your hatcher retire? Let me <laughs> just make sure that I don't think I have. Nope. Okay. Uh, all right. So, the two gnolls attack Gerald. It's the oh. the soon to retire. They miss. Uh, two more rush up to try to attack. Uh, okay. You all are uh, in combat under attack. Yes, I can see that. <laughs> this would not be... He'd be in the middle, right? Yes. Um, now, Mannequin was checking the door, so I am going to put him there. Otherwise, you can kind of rearrange, right? Yeah, yeah, you can kind of do that. Um, so one of them comes up to attack Mannequin. Misses. Uh, two more... Uh, I'm sorry, three more come up to attack Gerald. A 19 will hit, and a 16 will not hit. Okay, um, you take four points of damage. Uh, meanwhile, uh, out here in the surprise round, this actually should have gone first, but it, I don't think yeah. it matters. So they will they will actually attack again because they had a surprise round. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh-huh. Yes, um, it does. So let's see. Um, they get a plus zero and both miss uh, and then in the surprise round these they are going to not they're gonna move around to try to attack but this is as much as they can do they've got a oh yeah they have pole arms oh all of them yeah. Wow. Uh, does a 14 hit? Alaric. No, it's a, a 16. All right, let's see. They are going to get to try to attack again just on their normal round. Uh, 17 hits, right? Yep. Because of my AC, yes. Actually, I had the damage die wrong. Something. You take 10 damage. Oh, lordy. And Uh-oh. these are... One hit die, and they miss, and it's Earl's turn. Okay. Hit points. I wonder if they jump the people. Say again. Actually, yeah. Could you de- could you describe these things to us? Well, no. They uh, I mean, look kind yeah, of. But... They look like um, a mix between a dog and a person, like a mutated person with some dog-like features. Uh, I think I have uh, their. A token of them here. You called them the beastmen, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. They're phys- they're tall, physically strong. 
Uh, I wouldn't say they're... I'd say they're slightly hunched and quite slightly not as tall, but otherwise just humanoid. Okay. Yeah. I guess it's worth a try. Alright. Uh... Yeesh. I've got proper weapons, too. Alright. Uh... Fall back into a group. We need to, and get that door closed behind. Get Alaric in, onto this side of the door and close the door behind. Uh, yeah, it's more dangerous though, right? All right. He gets attacked if he moves, right? Um, yeah. So uh, they will all get to attack you. Okay, uh, so I, I can cast darkness, fifteen foot radius. Okay, the spell will go at the at the end of the round, uh, but yeah, I'm gonna cast whole person as well. Who, who are you gonna cast it against? Uh, the the creatures, if, if it works. Which one? The the one in front of us. The one directly in front of you. Well, it's gonna cast it on the group. If I could, if I get more than one. Uh, isn't whole person one thing? Yeah, uh, unless it. Works differently than I remember. Yeah, I've, no, I've never. One, one, two, four persons. Really? Oh, nice. Okay, that's, cool. That's rad. I, mean, I know that. that whips ass. Yeah, that, I, I like that uh, one more than the uh, the BX one. <laughs> what are these? What are these bigger ones? These are roughly human height creatures with a slightly hunched forward posture, dog-like heads, and human-ish strength. Okay, but uh, it doesn't mean anything that some of them have bigger tokens. Uh, no, it does oh. not. Okay. No. Some, do, you, do some of them have different? Yeah, yeah. I just I just haven't been able to adjust them. It's, it doesn't it mean anything. It says you can pick a single target, but they get a minus two. Get the mm -hmm. penalty of saving group. It. I, I uh, want to do a group. Like yeah, that. sensible plan. Okay, so uh, let me go back to the combat procedure here, and we'll kind of go by the numbers because there's a lot of tactics, pretty complicated in my opinion, and a lot of high stakes. So we're gonna go by the procedure. So, okay. uh, spells have been declared, so we got dark. And where are you casting the darkness? Um, well, it goes off at the end of the round. I'm not sure it says useful at the moment. Um, I think I'm going to do... Oh. You only have seconds to decide. Yeah, um, we're going to do charm person instead. Which one, okay. which person are you going to do it against? Actually, I don't think, uh, do you speak, um, I don't think you speak their language. What, what languages do you That's, speak? I mean, charm person's not based on that. It'll at least make them more reluctant to stab him. That counts for something. In BX, you have to be able to speak their language. Um, well, I'm just going by the spell description, but... It simply says the unfortunate the... creature falls under the caster's influence. It's Love extremely it. vague. No, I love that. Yeah, that's good. I mean, anything to remove a factor from the, you know, or at yeah. least tilt are things. You, are you casting on the ones that he's casting on? Because that would be... No, um, who are you doing, John, to the right? I think he's doing the four immediately in okay. front of him. Okay, yeah, then yeah. in that case, I'm going to pick on this one. Gotcha. Okay, so, uh, <clears throat> let's see. Uh... Spells, no, initiative, uh, uh, it's your all's turn, uh, so if you are mm. firing a missile or moving, you can do that now. So, can you do it all for So I do speak chaos. If they speak that, I can speak. Then you're new, that'll probably help. The, the spells so go at the, at the end of the round. If you're moving yeah. or, or, ca or firing a missile, you can do that now. Okay, so if I move, I get attacks from even the ones with pole arms? Uh, yeah. Well, then I might as well go down fighting here, holding these off. Because my odds are real bad on moving. I can only, uh, I have one trick to distract one when I move, but not five of them. All right. Okay. So, uh, this in is that, where I go. In that case, I will, if it's not too late, is it too late? You have declared that you are preparing yeah. a spell, so you will be doing that, yeah. Well, I know that, but can I change the spell? No. Yeah. 
Yeah, because you're like you doing the whole round, like the whole round. You're preparing. This yeah, thing. I know. I, I thought he was. Yeah. yeah. I. Yeah. Yeah. I just can't serve. I can't just give them seven attacks on me and. Sure. Uh, yeah. Then I won't get a chance to do anything. At least this way, so, if I drop, I hurt one of them. So let me make sure I understand. The dogs are not moving, and the thief is not moving. Is that right? All right. Oh, I'm gonna have my dog attack. Okay. The dog then, is attacking. Yes. Then, Sorry. Then you're if, have you, him if you are you moving, go ahead and move now. I'll, I'll move the hireling. Can't He'll, move it. Uh, oh, my bad. I can. Uh, Didn't he say you. he's gonna? Is he gonna put hold on them? Why are we moving to attack the ones he's gonna put hold on? Well, he can only hit one d four, and there's six. Oh, of them. got it. All right. All right. Yeah. I'll, yeah. You, you should be able to move this uh, this doggy here now. Uh, and I'll, by the way, this is about, yeah, 20 feet across, so I'll say it can fit. Um, but you, you can fit about four across. So from where you are, uh, this is actually a time when the the grid would actually be useful. But so that will fit, you know, and, and Caden, you could fit there, you know, like, so this is like, if, if that makes sense, if that's what you want to do, you know. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. If you are doing a melee attack, you can do that now. I'll do that. Do so. My thief, you're uh, uh, trying to hit armor class, and and these are hit die. I just want to make sure. Yeah, they are hit die two. They are two hit ah. die, uh, except for the dogs, which are hit die one, Alaric. Um, and you want to hit a uh, armor class fourteen. Except the dogs are 12. Okay. Okay. What's the 3 by 6 for? I was joking. Oh, all right. <laughs> I mean, I really, uh, started roll 3D. That's actually, yeah, that's that's actually, uh, DM did that once with me. Like, I failed yeah, the yeah. second throw, but he didn't tell me right away. And he goes, all right, now roll another 3 die 6. Is nobody what, else what? attacking in melee? I'm looking for the thing oh, to attack. The dog is. is. Yeah, my dog is too... I guess I'll uh, a natural 20. That's good. That'll hit nice. something. Yeah, what are you attacking with that natural 20? That's the dog in front. All right, yeah, you killed the Is dog. Is he alive? Nope. Oh, he's dead? Yeah. Okay. That was my dog attack. The and a natural uh, one. I got both extremes, baby. So only one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. I get more attacks. He's one level. Yeah, and you can go ahead and roll. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And if he dies, I don't attack anymore because the gnolls are above one. Uh, I mean, the no. beast. Yeah. Uh, Still okay, I get yeah. one more attack. Though. Wait, I get... Yes, one more. Oh, my God. Two ones, a 20, and a 12. Jesus oh, gosh. H. Okay. All right. Oh, so, yeah. So, no other uh, no other melee attacks going on? The uh, We got Mannequin. Um, Ma mannequin, yeah. Uh, the dog attacked and missed. Um, mannequin. Attacks and misses. Last. Good luck. Alright. Alright, um, you can now cast your spells. The spells, you can you can roll for the spells. Do I need well, to do any... He needs uh, to save, save. That, All right. that one guy down. You want me to roll again for the number? Yes. Um, of spell uh, number, okay. Yeah. 1d4, uh, let's see it. So... Oh, nice. Okay, so yes. that's better. Fourteen. I think fourteen fails. Uh, wait, no, he's hit die two. So, this fire fourteen. There's uh what was your saving throw, Alaric, at level two? Oh, I have no idea. Uh, what is I it now? Try to look up. It's uh, eleven now. Oh gosh. Okay. I can look real quick. Uh, yeah, I was gonna look it up. Um, up. Hopefully my whole person doesn't fail. Saving throw at two is fourteen, so he passes. Oh, the whole person? Crap. No, oh, uh, no this is charm person. Oh, okay. But for hold person, does he get a saving throw? He yeah, does get yeah, a saving they, throw. They all get saving throws, I think. Okay. I got four of them. Uh, yeah, saving throw applies. So two pass uh, and two fail. So uh, which ones do you want to hold? I'll probably get the ones 
like right in front of me. Okay. Uh, yeah. So these are now held. How long does that, that a lot. that last? I think it's nine turns. Nice. Okay. Uh, all right. And then I uh, now they're able to attack. It's their well, no, no, no. That was actually one turn. So, um, Gerald. Shift. Yeah. D thank you. Four. Real good, Lark. Nice. All right, you are able to. Uh, is anyone casting any spells this round? Darkness, 15 foot radius. Oh, nice. Boy. Where are you going to put that in? Well, I killed the dog. I, killed um, I would like to put it right in front of Alaric. Hold on, we're uh, not doing melee yet. Oh, I thought you said melee, sorry. No, yeah, melee. I'm asking for yeah. the group's intentions and spells. My bad. Yeah, I'd like to put it right in front of Alaric so that none of those creatures can see what's going on. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but right... That. Okay. Um... Force them to move or move back or something. Uh, yeah, totally. Uh, any other spells? Obviously, no missiles, and we're still fighting. So, um, if you're moving, you can do that now. If you're moving. Can I get the one uh, Since I fighting the dogs? Uh, I'm sorry. Say again, uh, John. No, I just to... The one in front of Manacton. Can I reach it? Uh, the only one you can reach is this one right here. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Go help, uh, go help Alaric. I will Alaric. say no to a healing spell, under the circumstances. I, yeah, I, I'm, only, I, I'm only down four. I will say that you are not in melee. I am down ten. So, yeah, you can also, like... I was actually gonna go try to help Alaric. Okay, yeah, you, you can do that. Um, and the thief will go with you if you ask, but that puts Gerald, you know... I'm gonna leave the dog over there with... Okay, uh, the thief will go with you. And well, frankly, Gerald is going to say push. something effective. Caden, it is er imperative that you get out of here alive. You are the most important person in the Hounds of the Pine. You must escape alive. Oh, All right. Okay. Yeah, as you are desperately fighting, he tells you that. You come out of the room, you see Alaric uh, surrounded. He's holding a wound, probably, with his magic sword held out, surrounded by these things, pole arms in the dark, across oh. from a uh, dog. Uh, let's see, so that's movement. Nobody else is moving. They are um, not going to move. They're all pretty happy. Oh, wait, no, one has a pole arm, so uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, spells are before movement. Okay. Ah, oh, crap, there's more in there. All right. Now, uh, let's see. So, movement, and now if you're attacking or casting a spell, you can do that now. All right. How bad off does uh, Alaric look? I'm at halfway, but basically. <sighs> I got, like, 18 yeah. hit points left. Oh, okay. You're good. Right. I got yeah. 10, 10 damage in one round. Yeah, it'll be fine. In one attack. I'm, I'm going to attack. Rex hits for four damage. Okay. Do you, uh, Rex kills this one? Yeah, that's my dog. Oh, it's, oh, it's dead anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. In that case, Menachem has nothing to do this round. Unless he could, unless his deck, no, he's got a, I don't think so. He can't reach one of these guys. No. Yeah. All right. Anyone else doing a melee attack? I made one, but missed. If there's no, uh, if there's no, you know, nice. magical darkness, I'm attacking. Uh, I'm gonna say that you can attack into the darkness, uh, but it'll okay. be a, at a minus. Well, the dark, two. the darkness doesn't go off till after this anyway. That's what right? I thought. There's oh no yeah, that's fine too. Yeah. Actually, I love that. Okay, I hit for uh, five damage on the dog. All right, you kill the dog. Then that's okay. the end of my attacks. Now, Gerald, don't you have more than one attack? I do, but not against two Hittite creatures. I only, um, even yeah, if we, right. even if we were being very generous and saying I get three hit dice worth of attacks, there's that doesn't. I wouldn't have sure. two hit dice after the first one. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, I got four hit dice, but it still doesn't count. It's only. All right, so uh, that's it for this. Uh, let's see, the thief is going to attack. He misses. All right. Um, how did that Where dog? Did he go? Oh, there he is. I, 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 I'd assume, I'd assumed you moved it. Yeah, I moved it. Now you, he, remember, he Would already moved far enough to, uh... 
he can't move. Oh, uh, he, he was already right. in position. Yeah, you move then attack. And yeah. then beginning of the attack. Okay, yeah. yeah. He could eat one of the guys who was held, but that I don't know. Yeah, you failed. Okay. So, uh, let's see here. Uh, it's their turn. Their let's see. One is gonna fa attack the thief. Uh, Twelve. I think that. Let me see here. Pretty sure that hits. That would hit regular leather, but not not yeah, with a dex bonus. Him. Dex bonus should give him a plus one. I've got him at an AC of twelve. I randomly generate their stats. Some of them, their stats are kind of j tragic sometimes. Um, <laughs> uh, taking four damage, and he's got uh, he's dead. Oh, that he was gets stabbed fast. straight through what? the throat, and Egon is dead. Or Egon. You all have oh, well. <laughs> maintained the hundred percent casualty rate so far. Uh, and anyways, one, two, three, four are gonna attack Alaric. And I think they all miss. And then one's gonna attack Caden. And misses. Wow. Here's, that, here's that monster luck that you are looking for, you know? Yeah. Uh, and then four are gonna attack Gerald. His last day on the job. Um, Indeed. So, uh, what's your armor class? Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay, it's, so it's normally it's sixteen technically, but I have the minus one to enemy attacks thing. All right, you take ten damage. That's the end of Gerald Faria, I'm afraid. Really? 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 Yeah. Yeah, I have eight hit. I have eight hit points <laughs> left after oh, this. Oh Lord! On the last day. <laughs> Of course, that's what always happens. Uh, How would be? Let's see, Caden, you're the caller now. Uh, roll a d6. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, come on, I can call from beyond the grave. Does, <laughs> does, does my spell go off? I'm sorry, oh. yes, your spell oh, yes. goes off and they are now in magical darkness. Okay. Um, uh, this is bad. Alright, you are able to act first. Is anyone casting a spell? I forgot to ask that. I'm out. Okay. What? You're out. Oh. Well, you have the darkness there. Okay. The darkness is spreading across a 15 foot radius. Round about here. Okay. Does that mean I could go back in there? Without getting an attack on me, or. I don't know. Okay. So. <clears throat> I see you, I guess. That's a thing. Yeah, Should I pull back? It's suddenly dark. Um, this one here is not in the darkness. Oh, I'm gonna attack it. Otherwise, Caden would be, or I'm sorry, Alaric would be in the darkness. Uh, yeah, actually, why don't we go ahead and narrate that? Tell us what happens when he it, yeah he he yells for for Caden to like make it out alive, and then what happens? Uh, it's very mundane in the end. Uh, what? He blocks one spear, the other one comes under the shield. It's a well-made, sturdy spear. It breaches through uh, his chainmail. Uh, his legs buckle under him, and they just trample out over him, and they just pierce him like a like a pig. Wow! Just, just wow. Grind him down. He doesn't. Even, he barely even has. He doesn't even have time yeah. to cry out. He's just gone. Okay. Yeah, nobody here for those. We're supposed to have a trainer. Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, you are able to act first. Let me bring up my combat procedure here. There Surprise is at least spells, it initiative. Was quick. If anybody is moving, please move your token. That's the first thing. If anybody's moving, please move your token. And you would have an opportunity to attack only one of you from this one guy. The rest are in darkness, so I'm going to say that you... You, right. you know what? You cast the spell, so I'm going to say that you could make it out if your goal is to try to get in here and, and yeah. lock yourself well, in yeah, that one that, way. <laughs> uh, we need to get... I mean, let's get the hell out of here! Uh, but I can, and the dogs do not... Well, they're about... They're, really. you, no, they're not. They're... So, yeah, let me let me reduce no this spell. down to one thing. I do this often. Okay. First of all, Caden, do you have any spells left? That's that's one thing. Yeah, I've got light. And okay. Your light wounds. So light. Using light, you could do a flashbang behind you. So you get like this area of darkness, and you all like run along the wall into the dark, and you do a flashbang behind everybody as you leave. And I'll say that you can make it out of here. 
But or you can keep fighting. Uh, you know, you will have lost the body of uh, of, of Gerald. Yeah, I would like to keep fighting. Okay. But you better get out alive, me. or I what will find you, you, and I will smack you. This could be a final stand, but I don't see that a guy that we've been adventuring with all this time, we're going to leave his body behind. Yeah, I just can't see that. All right, all right. I'm you kidding. can. I don't think we'll do that. You can use this Let's darkness use... to move behind this door Mag if you want to do Magnus that. would. Yeah, I know. Well, Magnus, Magnus would. I know. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I get that. All right, you get behind the door. You you get that. If so one well, of you... you go. Alaric, if you want to hammer the door for your turn, you can do that, and I'll close the door. How about having Caden hammer the door yeah, unless you're going to be it. casting spells, and that way I can sure. charge and help oh, them yeah. over here. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, yeah you uh, do have the... What in the I world? would really much prefer to be where the dog is, but the is. dog's there, so I'm going to expect Mag myself to four attack. Magnus can't quite bring himself to leave Caden behind, though. Even though... It probably means his death. Oh, wow. I think we're going to make it. Uh, all right. So you ha Caden hammers the... Do you have... Well, you guys got it. So you hammered the door in. Uh, we might go a couple minutes over, but I'm, I'll try to get it done here. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, this is the third round for this. Alaric, you move. Uh, what about do you have yeah, I realize that's a held guy, so I can't be attacking him, so I'm attacking the other guy. Dang. Doesn't that put you like... Yeah, it right. does. In the same spot that the other guy died. They're gone. Yeah, but that's the only place I can attack. You, you could. Oh get no, the... I could go around this end. I'm sorry, I could go around this way. Yeah. That's not. That's a short distance. Yes, I go around here. No, but then other people get attacked, so it doesn't help. By the way, if you come around, I use like fifth edition rules for sneak attacks. Like if there's enough chaos, Mannequin can get, get his backstab, uh, which is pretty. Yeah, you devastating. guys sneak around. I'll... Let me be the absorber of all the death here. Yeah. But only two people can fit here to attack this one. So if you you could have a dog and mannequin if you want, you know. Uh, and they they do. You're right. They would go the long way around. They would like kind of like go. I'm like gonna this attack to south, knowing that they're gonna try to attack that guy. Okay. So mannequin uh, and the dog. Uh, we can say this is Caden's uh, uh, dog. You know, uh, comes around, and you can attack. You can use backstab with mannequin. Oh, uh, like so Rex. Well, this, is, this was actually Rex. But, okay, um, that's fine. It's Rex, yeah. That's fine. You okay. rolled it? I'm just kidding. Uh, um, I already rolled a mist, but... What's that? Oh, well, that's up to Ross. Yeah, so uh, they've already moved, so yeah, you all can do your melee attacks uh, and, and any spells. I so, hit armor class 15 and do 8 damage if I hit. Okay, uh, let me look at it here. That's a better roll. Rex does five points of damage. Holy man. Yes. Nice. That's Manak Manakin's uh, backstab. Oh, that's a dagger. It does max damage, right? But it's a dagger. I, I have no idea. Well, I it's a dagger. So. Yeah. I think uh, on a backstab, I think you do One max sec. damage. I've, I'm Thank an excellent to look shit up. Backstab, backstab does double. Double damage, double damage yeah. yeah. So. And the plus so. four to hit. Okay, so oh plus four. Well, anyway, he rolled a twenty. Okay, so with two. So it's six points of damage then. Yeah. And Manakam feels appropriate. Uh, he is Manakam level. You said he's level uh, five. Level, level five. Is that still? Oh plus, yeah, in that case is it's pretty high. That's right. It's tripled for level five. Wow. So give me another d four. So make that. I think it's dead. Seven points. So he did. Manakam did seven. Uh, I don't know if he has any bonus to damage. I don't think so. And the dog did five. Oh, okay. Sorry yeah, to he's... interrupt. Do you have a plus to hit in your in your rolling thing set up? Because at level five, you should have plus something based on your level. I could tell you where that plus something is, but hang on. I appreciate your all's help. Yeah, I. Um, you can look at my chart at my roll. Um, it looks like yeah, no. but it doesn't tell me if it what your natural role is. I don't know if that's modified or if, not. If you that's hover, a, if, you hover. Uh, if you hover over it, yeah. it looks like there's no oh, bonus. It looks like there's no bonus um, on that. Oh, there isn't. Okay, good. So that means you're actually under rolling. I've posted about this. You're a pal, a rogue. So you made my screen small. It's not. I mean, this is a guy that, that Mag. See. This is a guy that Magnus charmed. A while back, it's not actually. I didn't create the character of Manakin, so I don't know much about about his native abilities. I should have put that in the chart, and I'll because I put it in, so I'll make a 
bonus. So he's got. A, what's his bonus at level five? Yeah. My thing just crapped out, so I got to reload it all over again. It's fucking the door uses my whole turn, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I thought so. Okay, so these are dead. Um. Well, meanwhile, well, you hit with the natural twenty, so we don't have to worry about it. But I'm gonna look it up as soon as my thank you recovers. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, uh, let's see. I don't think anybody else can hit right now, so I think these two are gonna do it. They attack Alaric. One of them. Does a seventeen hit Alaric? Yep, seventeen hits. Okay. You do a plus one to all your attacks uh, at level five. At level six, you do plus two. Okay. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> you take eight points of damage, Alaric. I'm nearly close to dropping. Next one should drop me. Oh, uh, that sounds like a Caden problem. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Okay, um, and also Caden, roll a d6 for initiative. I assume y'all are out of spells for now. They're banging on this door. Also, they're gonna be trying to get it open. Ah. Uh, uh, oh, they're able to act first. Oh, all right. Well, they're gonna attack. There's there's no way out. So they're gonna try to. Yeah. Fight. Okay. Yeah. Can we move, or is that... Alark, do you have a healing potion? Uh, yes, you can move. Yes, I do. Yeah, you, you can move, that's right. I, I assumed you wouldn't weren't moving. Except Caden, you know, Caden, you're... I forgot it, thank you, move, but Anyways, they did miss. I have one and, um, and yeah, you can move. You move your token. And you can also attack and cast spells. All right, if Menachem moves over here, well, back here... Can he hit with a missile that dude that's behind, not in melee, with a Laric? Yeah, you know, that's a good point. Um, yeah, because he's not in melee, you know, so I'm going to say he can do that. Uh, right. it's, a, it's a funny thing, right? But um, he is level five, so I'm not going to say I'm going to always rule it that way, but I think in a sense... This good is lord! Awesome. You also get backstab. I can't. Well, then, in that case... Really? He gets backstab with that? Well, you would in fifth edition, but uh, uh, wow. does it, well, that's does it... a, that's that's up to you. <laughs> yeah, actually, I'm not going to try to claim that. Now he does get to shoot twice, I think, in in swords and wizardry, yes. right? missile weapons. So I'll look, I'll look at backstab. Real well, quick. his first roll was a, another natural twenty. Oh, uh -huh. um, this is this is what I thought. It simply says, when attacking with surprise, comma separate thought from behind, comma. The thief gains plus four to hit and inflicts double damage. So yeah. yes, ah. just like in fifth edition, it doesn't matter if it's a knife or not. You can you can do it so long as you're either surprising them or attacking from behind. Well, in that case, he just did fifteen points of damage yeah. with his first shot. You, to you that shoot guy. him between the eyes. Um, nice. You need not waste another yeah. arrow. Well, like yeah. Uh, unless you want to save Alaric's life, potentially. Uh, well, you could also kill that's, Alaric. That's also that's kill, life. Accidentally also kill him. Kill. Yeah. yeah. Does it does it kill him outright, or do we have a? Is there like a round to like do first aid? No. Yeah. No round. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well. Yeah. No, I don't think I'll risk it then. Uh, I mean, it's. I'll, I'll leave it up. I'll, he shouts. Shall I shoot? Yeah, I don't I'll think so. Up. I'll leave it up to Alaric. Also, I don't see anything that says you can't just kill these things that are uh, that are held. Yeah, so, you can kill the things that are held. Just like sleep doesn't say yep. that you can't. So, anyways, uh, if you're doing a melee attack, you can do that if you haven't already. Uh, is Caden going to be healing me, or, or yeah, not? I'm gonna and, and you can do that. Yeah. Then I'm going to attack. I'll rather rather than use a potion because if I kill him, I don't get killed. Does 14 hit? Uh, a 14 hits. Oh, you took the risk of shooting him. Okay. No, no, no. This is the dog. The oh, dog the dog. Did, yeah, that's right. Rex, 23 hits for 6 damage. And Rex did 8. All right, yeah, oh, you are. Uh, the, the dog hops onto him, and then Alaric, you're able to finish him as he's knocked down by this huge dog. Um, you all are able to, to kill these things here so that they're not a threat and they, they're not released from the spells. Um, or you can tie them up. We'll figure that out later. You can tell me. Meanwhile, they're banging no, they're on the dead. door. Did I get a heal? Yeah. What was it? I didn't see it. Uh, five. Five, right, thank you. So I am up to 15 hit points. Let's see, one, two. Oh, we got all of them now. A little below 30. Oh, except 30. for the ones banging on the door. Well, yeah. Yeah, but now we could set that up very easy. We could just right. open the door, they come tumbling in and into a gauntlet attack. 
Yeah. And, uh, uh, if Magnus can move. Yeah, you all can rearrange yourselves at this point, actually, because they... Oh, uh, thank God. They, I will take a potion of healing before I do this, just in case. All right. You can set I yourself up one, however you want, in fact. What is it? 1D what for potion healing? I think it's 6. D6 plus 1, I think. Okay. Yeah. You, you want to, like, fill this in so they can't get in? You can do that if you Five want. Five more. How, how much no. If you guys flank the door. Out of 29. Yeah, I'm gonna use my other cure light wings on you. Okay. If you if you guys flank the door, can can we get a clear missile shot? Like if in other words, if they flank the door so yeah. that anyone coming in has to I would go. imagine I you would call me to open the you know, give me a signal to open the door and I pull the door open and you can fire as soon as I pull the door open. I, I think we could time that. I'm gonna rule that it'll put him in melee and you'll get to be able to do a missile shot on the first round. On subsequent rounds you can do anything within the second rank or further. Okay. Uh, so they good. they move in. Um, Six more hit points. All right. Uh, if you're flanking them like this, you can. So you don't want the dogs up to meet them, and that's fine. Um, I mean, he only has nine hit points. His, our, his AC is twelve. I'd rather not they be the primary target. And nobody's casting any spells again, right? You're out of spells. Right, I right? used my okay. like we thought him again. Um, <clears throat> all right. He uh, me open the door. That was six more, right? If everybody's got it. got it, thank you. If everybody's in the position that they're in, they can you can do all your attacks, attacks and damage, missile and melee. Damn it, I missed. Ten. Ten, ten. Ah, ten. Oh, underwhelming. The bow will save that us. That hits. Uh, that that's that's uh, that's his first. Shot. I'm going for the top guy here. I'll say that you get backstab because, like, you know, just. Put him somewhere sneaky. Don't put him out like in the open. You'll get backstabbed from it, because they're they're in melee, so it makes sense to me. Right, you're poking, you're shooting from that doorway. Okay, not so great on the damage that time. Six damage for the first shot. Uh, I keep rolling a raw d20, um, but he's at a plus two with a bow attack. And he's plus, plus one for his level. Well, that's I, I, I'm well, incorporating that. Yeah. Yep. And a plus hit. four because it's a backstab. Man, you're being <laughs> but, generous. You're being no, so generous. It's Ross. true. It's, a, <laughs> what, it's no, what it says. That's straight up for real. Okay, that one should. Uh... Yeah, you. The first one, he like nicks him in the shoulder, and then he turns around, and then he just gets one between the eyes and falls over. Okay, no one else does any melee attacks. They're nope. gonna attempt to do theirs. Uh, two are gonna attack. Alaric. I'm going to kind of switch it up this time. Yeah. Take it! A nat 20 on one of them for 6 oh, damage. No. And then. But that, hey, that's the, you healed me, so that's good. Yeah. One of them is going to attack Caden with a pole arm for 16. Does a 16 hit? Yep. Caden takes oof, 3 damage. It almost landed on a 9. Oh, 3 damage. Oof. And uh, uh, Caden, roll a d6. And I'm going to move this one out of the way. Oh. Um, oof. They are going to do a morale check. I forgot to do that. And they pass. Uh. Um, they're going to move and fill this in and fight to the death. I figure the dogs are going to attack now, right? Uh, the dogs? The dogs, yes, of course. Yeah, you can go ahead and move the dogs. And if you're firing a missile into the second rank, you can do that. Going for the top My one again. Dog cannot attack. No, no, a missile. If you're firing a missile into the second rank. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Because they're going to do it too. Okay. That misses. I keep. I need to actually roll the deck on. Actually, they wouldn't do a missile attack. Ah, it was There's almost no a twenty. Okay. All right, well, this time Menachem's not so lucky. Okay, so moving in missiles. So if you're doing a melee attack, you can do that now. Menachem, roll the uh, ten. I'm sorry? Uh, oh, that's one of us, maybe. What? What are you saying? 
If, if you're doing a melee attack, you can go ahead and roll for it. Right. What I was asking about Menachem, he rolled a 10, so that's a, a, a 12, and he misses, right? Armor class is 14, I think you said? Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's what I want to know. Oh, and I miss also. I haven't hit a damn thing for a while now. Oh, no. the yeah, dog's right. The dog's no luck either. All right. Tide is turning wrong. Okay. They were right to stay. So, Caden, you got a three on a d20? Oh, no. Yeah, what's a dog? Okay. What's is Caden? What's Caden doing? Oh, it's another car. Okay. I'll call it out. I, so I don't always go strictly by the procedure. I know that can be confusing because sometimes I'll mix it up. But I'll cue you. You know, I'll say, "All right, if you're gonna leave, tell me to do this." You know, I'll I'll frame the situation. Uh, but because it's life or death, I'm doing the procedure. I'm not going down the procedure right, right now. That way, you can think tactically. Uh, it's not narrative. Like you know, I'm go I'm going by the procedure. So I'll say, if you're moving, move. If you're doing melee, do melee, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Although I do, I do mess it up sometimes. But I call out to Caden, blind one for next. Oh yeah, you do have that. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember. Feels like if, he told me about the heel. Does do they get a save? And I use the BX version. Yeah, in BX they get a save if it's used like that. Okay. Yep. So, uh, Caden, roll a d6 for initiative. Roll a uh, five. Five or six. Nice. Yeah, bit. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, if you are firing a mi missile into the second rank or uh, doing a melee attack or a spell, you can do that now. Because they don't I have will... spells and they don't have missiles, so it all comes Finally down Finally, I hit six damage on I'm going to pop up his Q and try to blind blood. All Front right. Rank guy. I'll do a uh, see if he can pass uh, a save. Oh, back to back rank. Okay. So he's able to avoid the the light. Um, wow. Let's see, Alaric, you hit uh, for six damage. I'm attacking the, the so the dog can attack. I'm gonna attack the one behind, the one that the dog's in front of. Okay. My dog missed. Oh crap. Well. Yeah. Okay, looks like uh, that's it. All right, so it's their turn. Uh, two of them are going right. to actually. Oh wait, yeah, did Manakin? Did he already attack? Um, all missiles have failed. Oof. Okay. One's actually going to attack the dog at this point, because and misses, and then one's going to attack Alaric, misses, and then one's going to attack the dog. I feel like if a dog is on you, it suddenly becomes really important to deal with that. Yeah. Yeah, I'd so like, say so too. Uh, this one, a nat twenty hits Caden, or what? Seven Ooh. damage. Oh. oh. All right. D six. Roll a seven, please. Uh oh, seven. you gotta get a six, yeah. Seven. Three, oh no. Okay, this one's gonna attack Caden. Does a 14 hit Caden? No. Okay, uh, one's gonna attack the dog, misses, dog, and they'll make a new morale check next round. They all miss, and you're able to attack. Same thing, you can do all your attacks. Dog, for gosh sakes. I hate attacking once. I can't hit when I attack once. Nice. Oh, okay. here we go. The good bonk. Yeah. All right, the good bonk. I'll just happened. assume that you shoot the weakest one, you know. Um, Probably. Um, no, um, uh, this is not sneak attack anymore, right? Uh, no, it is. Cause yeah, because they're in melee and surrounded, ah. and you're over here, and... Um, yeah, I'm pretty generous on... There's some other things well, that I... Like in that case, and stuff. Yeah, Menachem does 12 damage to, to the uh, one he shot. Well, if, if that's the case, why don't you just yeah, take out the, the attack, strong one. one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then he knows he's strong. doing sneak attack, so he's aiming at the strong one. Because yeah, Kate, okay. Kate clocks that one, and then... Uh, Rex misses again. Yeah. Magnus, Magnus is throwing darts. No, the back rank is gone. There's nobody to throw darts at anymore. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then looks like everybody else. Looks like that's it. Okay. Uh, two survived. I'm going to do a morale check. It's going to be... Oh, gosh. They pass. Uh, they're going to stand their well, ground and fight to the death. We go. And they're trying to get the dogs off of them. Dog and good. they fail. All right. You all can... All right, roll a d6, Caden. 
Yes. Nice, Caden. Good one, Caden. Oh, Coming in the clutch. You win. Okay, house wins. Yes, I hit. Not much damage, but I hit. Three. I do not. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Manakin's not shooting anymore. Maybe the dog could take him out. Oh, God, I missed with the dog, too. You, you could move him if you want to move. You know, he would not get backstabbed, though. Re Rex hits the one in front of him. Yeah, Menachem can attack, okay. attack melee on the wounded one. Rex hits for six. Uh, is that this one right here? It's that one. Okay. It's that one. I, 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 I think I'm going to stick with that because it's, you know, then Caden's got a partner and Alaric's got a partner. All right. I think that's it. So let's see. So we're going to... Not Menachem. Uh, is it Menachem? Yeah, Menachem. Does he have? He can attack melee, right? Um. Yeah. I guess he would have moved if he knew he couldn't shoot yeah, anybody yeah. anymore. Uh, yeah. He will not get backstabbed, but he can. He yeah, can still attack. get in and attack. Yeah. All right. I think that's, that hits that's... the dog. I think the the dog has AC twelve. Yeah. So. Twelve. The dog huh? might perish. Oh. Well, which which dog? Wait, Yours. isn't Menachem the one doing the attacking? Uh, yeah, Menachem just attacked the, the the lower one. Rex takes six damage. Okay, he's still alive. And then Menachem, 16, three damage. That does kill that one. Unless... This, this is brutal. Let's see. Yeah, these things are really tough. Two hit die monsters in a large group is, is a... Is it, a was bottom, it was the bottom. It was the bottom, bottom one. That, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, D6, Caden. It is still possible, for example, for Caden to die. I usually wouldn't. Yeah, die. that's why. Yeah. That's why all this matters. That's why I wouldn't. I, I'm I not fudging on anything. Top of the body and I attack the one ahead. Okay. Rex hits. Nice. Okay. I do not. For eight. All right. Uh, Rex rips his. Rex is, Rex got so, pissed off when he got this hit. Thing is, <laughs> yeah, th this thing is like uh, the, he stabs Rex and. <laughs> And then it just like turns into the berserk, just madness, and Rex just like, that's, rips that's up and bad. jumps up and rips you, you, don't, you don't, yeah, you don't want to see that look in a dog's eye. Ripley should not hit anything. Um, okay, several things. Uh, Ooh, did, what, he what over, over, uh, Gara. Is he really dead? I'm so fucking dead, man. Like, there <laughs> are. Yeah, okay, I've got morning. lots of organs in my like upper part of my body, and I don't think any of them doesn't have a spear hole in it. You carry your dead out, including one uh, who has uh, who has been with Which you for did. for a very long time, um, and, and one you, for very short. Yeah, he indeed. had a sneak out path, and, you, and he gave it to us, and we stayed to get the body. You bring uh, the body of Gerald Ferraria, the one of the the founding. Knights of the Hounds of the Pine uh, on his last adventure back to uh, his final resting place in his foreign home of Zelkor's Ferry in the ground. Uh, what do you... Uh... We fought to bring back his body. Yeah. Perhaps his spirit will guard the town as well as he could. Actually, we'll have an honored place at the temple. Yeah, I think that that is total legit. And I... I'm going to have to think of something. I want to do something for the memory of him, but I got to see what I can do. 